Mountains are hard to navigate and this means that many areas on mountains haven't been visited by humans. Every year people venture up these mountains to push themselves and it's said that when you reach the top it's one of the most rewarding things a human can do. However, during many of these hikes people have reported seeing mysterious things and this in turn has inspired many stories and legends. The Himalayas is one location where many strange creatures have been reported. Those who have visited the region of Tibet have been told stories of large humanoid creatures sharing the mountains with humans, with the locals saying that these creatures are very much real but try to avoid human contact. These people spend their life on the mountains and they say they're certain about what they're seeing. These large humanoid creatures go by different names. Mountain people, the humanoids are most famous the Yeti. The Yeti is described as a giant ape-like creature believed to be found in the Himalayas. Yetis, according to modern-day sightings, are said to stand from 8 to 11 feet tall, have a coat of brown, reddish, or black hair, and said to resemble a huge upright walking ape. For the last few hundred years, individuals who have ventured to the mountains have reported seeing large humanoids, much larger than modern-day it was reported by those in the region that this area was their home, and that anyone who visited this region must respect that these beings were here first. When stories started to spread, it was hard to figure out whether these creatures were actually real or just a type of spiritual being, and this was because some tales would say that if you was ever lost in the mountains, one of these creatures would help guide you back. But this doesn't seem to be the case, as many who have visited this region have said they've seen the large humanoids themselves. One local in Tibet said the following about their encounter. Living in the mountains, we see and are told stories about things that many wouldn't believe. Most of us have lived here our entire lives and it's allowed us to have a more open approach than people that just visit. We've become accustomed to these conditions and what the mountains offer. We know the paths to take and what lies in the mountains. I know every creature here, big and small, and my recent encounter was unlike anything I'd ever seen. There has always been talks of great men who live in the mountains and these stories have been passed down by our parents and friends. Our ancestors talked a lot about these creatures and it's common knowledge that we share the mountain with them. Some of my friends have said they've seen them, but said that it didn't get close. They keep their distance from us and live deep within the mountainous regions. My friends have said to me that they do not harm humans, but they're also not fond of us. On one particular occasion, I decided to go for a hike. After tracking for hours, I reached a slope and could see something in the distance. At first, I thought it was someone who lived nearby, but as I walked closer, I was able to get a good look at it. I could tell that whatever this thing was, it was tall. If I had to guess, I would say this creature was around 8 feet in height. It also had a deep brown, reddish fur that surprisingly blended into the snowy backdrop. At this point, I would say the creature was around 60 feet from where I was standing. Although I was aware of the creatures, I never thought that I would encounter one. After observing it for several minutes, it suddenly turned its head towards me. Once I gazed into the creature's eyes, I started to get nervous. As this thing was much taller than me. However, after staring at me for what felt like several minutes, the creature soon went on its way. It's an incredible experience that I'll never forget. End quote. So, what are people seeing? One idea that's been put forward in recent years is that these creatures could just be hermits that live up in the mountains and they're being misidentified as yetis. This would make sense to some degree as living in these conditions would require you to wear a lot of layers and would in turn make you look a lot bigger than you actually are, giving off the illusion of you being a mountain monster while others have said a long extinct animal could be living in the mountains. For years, Bigfoot and Yeti have been nothing but a creature of legend as there has never been any hard proof of its existence outside of eyewitness reports. However, scientists are now beginning to think they might have an answer for why this supposed mythical creature keeps being reported. Scientists have conducted analysis of the protein structures of two phenomenon fossils of Dragantopithecus, and these are estimated to be two million years old. The Gigantopithecus has been proven for a fact to have once lived on Earth, leaving behind thousands of teeth and four partial jaws that had been discovered in recent years. The fossils proved to be from warm, humid regions believed to be that of Eastern Asia. However, recent teeth found in the swampy regions of the Americas that were thought to be Gigantopithecus have also been analyzed. The tooth enamel protein structure has been found to date back no more than 10,000 years. It's been hypothesized that the Jorgendopithecus genome might have split some 12 million years ago. The most common branch devolved into what is known today as the primate family consisting of monkeys, apes, and gorillas. While the second branch of the genome might have evolved into what is known today as Bigfoot and Yetis, while the main branch slowly developed the human-like features that we know today, the second branch is believed to have extended the Jorgendopithecus gene. 
elongating the arms and increasing their height. It's believed that the second dream could have survived this entire time undiscovered. Its large body also helps it inflame before being seen. Some scientists also believe it's within reason that the second species could have divided into many breeds, resulting in the black, shorter, smellier breed that would inhabit the swampy areas of Florida and it's been given the nickname of the skunk ape. The taller brown version found in the west closer to the Rocky Mountains are known to be more aggressive. And finally, the mountain version that lives in the colder areas such as the Himalayas and that has become known as the Yeti. It seems like every other day people are seeing mysterious things in our sky. One of the issues we have at the moment is people can't seem to agree on what they are. We are living in strange times though. Going back 30 years ago, rarely would you get officials talking about mysterious things in our sky. But now it seems that the conversation has shifted. More officials are coming forward and questioning what these things are. According to some, UFOs have been witnessed in our sky for thousands of years, with researchers saying that things like old paintings and papyrus detail these reports, with some of them matching similar shaped crafts that are being seen in the modern day. High up officials, pilots, military personnel, and even astronauts have opened up about their encounters, something that rarely happened a few decades ago. In fact, those that did speak out about these objects were often reprimanded, demoted, or in many cases losing their jobs completely. Some interesting photographs are currently being shared online that allegedly show a mysterious object in the shape of a disc. It's reported that this object came to the ground somewhere in Mexico with locals saying that black helicopters and police were on the scene immediately. Residents though were able to get in there and take some photographs with some reporting the officers had a hard time keeping people back. As with most of these photographs, it's important to keep an open mind. But like some of the residents said, if this was nothing, then why were they pushing people away with force? The photographs show what looked like a UFO in the shape of a disc. With others saying that when you zoom in on some of the images, it looks like this thing crashed into the ground. Others agreed with this and said that whatever this thing is, it's clearly taken some damage, pointing out that a huge chunk of the craft is missing. Others noted that the craft was giving off a strange humming sound at the time it was recovered, with locals saying the area was heavily guarded. One person said the following, this is interesting. Could this craft be something like a drone? It's quite small and looks the part. I'm sure that our military doesn't have anything in the shape of this. Also, the size of it is a big problem. If it was bigger, the argument could be made that an engine was inside and this was part of a military test, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I definitely don't think it's a drone either. Never seen one in the shape of this. It could be the case that someone made this to look like a UFO, but if this was the case, why so many police? And why black helicopters? Another person said this. That den in the front of the craft is interesting. It definitely doesn't look like this thing is made of weak material. End quote. Some UFO researchers who saw the images backed the idea of this thing being a scout and said that these are the crafts that the majority of people see. They are small and nearly impossible to photograph. They said that something interesting went down in Mexico. UFO researchers also said that how the government handles UFO sightings throughout the area is much different than the United States, saying that it takes much longer for officials to get there. And this means that people who are close to the area are able to get in and take photographs. As with most of these images, believers said they don't really tell us much, with skeptics pointing out that although the images are interesting and seem to suggest that a UFO hit the ground, we have as an object that looks to be in the shape of a UFO. We can't gather any more information for them. This isn't the only strange thing that happened in Mexico recently, with some residents saying that they've heard loud noises. Those who have heard it have described them as a loud boom and say they don't sound like anything they've heard before. One resident close to Morelia said they heard the noise during the early the woman said it was very loud, but it didn't sound like a typical explosion. She said the event happened at 1.15 a.m. on the 6th of April, and this was back in 2020. She went on to say that she heard it once more during the early hours of the morning. Other residents close to Mexico City back up these claims, saying that they heard the sounds around midnight. One man said the loud boom was high in the sky, and that whatever caused it was loud. He said that after the initial boom, there was another strange noise that followed. He described it as sounding similar to a loud trumpet. It seems though that not many people reported this event. Only a few others came forward and reported the mysterious sound. Although a lot of people didn't hear it or witness it, others said this isn't the first time that an event like this has been reported. Even NASA got involved and said the following, we could actually hear the typical strains of symphony in the sound of strange storms coming from our planet and not an alien spaceship. 
End quote. UFO researchers though said that sometimes when strange objects are seen or picked up on radar, the military will send out jets to go and investigate. And sometimes these jets create loud booms. And this is what people are hearing. One person was not happy with the explanation that this is a natural occurrence and said the following, I have seen many theories regarding the mysterious sounds coming from the sky and they're all very contradicting to one another various people would have us. Believe these sounds are a reoccurring natural phenomena, but if that were true, where's the documentation? Where's the proof this is happening all the time in nature? Not only that, but on other sites and organizations along with personal statements from citizens, many would have us believe these noises are due to construction work machinery. If that were true, then the company in control should have made a public statement regarding the noises, saying that it's them that are wrecking havoc around the world. There are no reliable facts or honest information regarding this unusual situation. Scientists have made countless discoveries. We photographed a black hole, flown a helicopter on Mars, launched fresh rockets into space, put humans on another celestial body, and have mapped out faraway star systems that could be host to other life. Yet the majority of our oceans remain a mystery. More than 80% of our oceans remain unexplored. Scientists have said we currently know more about what's going on the surface of the moon than what's happening within our very own oceans. Dr. Jean Cole Feldman, an oceanographer at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, said the following, In some ways it's a lot easier to send people into space than it is to send people to the bottom of the ocean. The intense pressures in the deep ocean make it an extremely difficult environment to explore. Although this is the case, various discoveries have baffled researchers, showing us how little we really know about our oceans. One interesting report came from the Navy. Most naval ships are able to withstand the worst forms of sea warfare and storms that nature can throw at them and the Knox-class U.S. Navy destroyer was likely more prepared than most. It turned out though there were no match for a monstrous sea monster that attacked it during a special operations mission that took place in the Pacific Ocean in 1978. As the USS Dean cruised the waters close to Ecuador, it was attacked by an unseen monster from below. It caused several technical issues in the failure of the sonar system vital for navigation of enemy waters, requiring the destroyer to return to port in California where it was removed from the waters for repairs and what they found shocked them. There was incredible and extensive damage to the hull of the ship, including deep cuts in the rubber coating that protected the ship. Over 80% of the supposedly indestructible coating was damaged with cuts, gashes, dents, and scrims. Inside the largest of these gashes, the repair team found huge curving hooks, and these were embedded in the hull. These hooks were strikingly familiar in that they greatly resembled the hooks found in suction cups of a large squid, except that the only problem was that these were over five times as large as any known squid species. Analysis of the gashes and the hooks found the creature who attacked the ship was likely a giant squid. They said the squid would have been almost 46 meters long. This is over three times as large as the current record-holding species of squid, which can grow up to 14 meters. Those who have searched for this potentially undiscovered species have dubbed it the USS Steam Monster and have said this monster squid could have done much more damage to this ship if it was given the chance. As unbelievable as it may seem that a monster squid capable of such destruction can lurk beneath the waves, it's a widely acknowledged fact that our knowledge of our ocean is ingrained and with scientists discovering thousands of new species every year, there's every chance that monstrous squids exist within their depths. The only way to solve this mystery would be to discover one day whatever it was that caused such damage to the shimp. Giant squids reside in the twilight zone of the ocean between 1,000 and 2,000 feet down. The information we know of these majestic animals has been sourced largely from squids that have passed away and washed up onto shores or caught in the nets of fishermen. Even researchers, though, have been open to the idea of much larger squids existing in the depths of the oceans. Mystery is that of the whale shark. Scientists have said that one of the greatest mysteries of the ocean is that of the whale shark, how this shark mates and where they give birth. Although the whale shark is the largest fish in the ocean, it's arguably one of the most gentle. This giant can reach lengths of over 40 feet and their white spots make them one of the easiest to recognize. Marine biologists have said that females give birth to live young, but as of right now this has never been observed. This is even more surprising when you bear in mind that whale sharks spend the majority of their time at the surface of the ocean. Jonathan R. Green, the director of the Galapagos Whale Shark Project, said the following, here is the biggest fish in the oceans. It's almost certainly the biggest shark. And what is known about their reproductive behavior is almost nothing. 
Scientists have said that the whale shark hasn't changed that much in the 17 million years it's been roaming our oceans and go on to note that it would have been around while the Tyrannosaurus rex was alive. It shows researchers how well adapted this creature is to the ocean. Although these sharks are slow moving and quite easy to observe, discoveries are still being made about them every year. For example, scientists in Japan announced they carried out studies on the whale shark and it showed them that they have retractable eyes. Going on to say that the ice surface is actually covered in thousands of sharp two fly structures, Jonathan Green said the following, There are a few things today on our planets that you can say that is absolutely new to science. We didn't know that before. So it's like the discovery of gravity. It's an exciting field to work in, but it can be frustrating. End quote. Green and his team decided to carry out tests on the whale sharks that gathered around the Galapagos Islands, saying that the majority of them were females and that they also appeared to be pregnant. By scanning the sharks, they hoped they could find out which ones were pregnant. The scans didn't reveal anything, so the team decided to tag the sharks in order to study their behavior, something that only caused more confusion. They said that the whale sharks were seen spiraling down to 2,000 meters, something that hadn't been seen before. The team were baffled as they said that whale sharks didn't need to do this. They don't have any predators and the majority of their prey is just below the surface of the water. Jonathan Green said the following, so it's layer upon layer of mystery that we're trying to get through and every time we come up with some kind of significant data, it just begs a whole new series of new questions. End quote. One sad fact though is that these creatures are caught for their fins, with marine researchers saying that a single whale shark fin can fetch up to 16,000 pounds. It's been estimated that over 100 million sharks are being caught every year, with marine conservationists saying that it's having a massive effect on our ecosystem. Asian consumers are to blame for this. And although many have stopped eating sharks, researchers have said that there's still many people that eat things like shark fin soup. Unsustainable fishing has also left a number of shark species on the brink of extinction. World Wildlife Fund's Global Shark Program leader Andy Cornish said the following about sharks being depleted. What happens is if you remove those large predators, it destabilizes the ecosystems underneath. When you remove sharks, strange things happen. Some populations of fish underneath increase, but other populations further down actually decrease in a way that's actually very difficult to predict. The best thing we can do is conserve our oceans. We need to have those sharks as part of our ecosystems. End quote. Another mystery is that of the glowing rock. On the 22nd of February, 2021, Montana Pibble made a mysterious discovery while she was walking along a beach in Thailand. She saw a glowing rock and decided to take it home, thinking that it could have been something of value such as a meteorite or even a fossil. She took the red-colored rock home. However, when she got there, she noticed that it had changed color. The original red color had faded, and she now said it was more purple. Wanting to get to the bottom of the mystery, she decided to ask her friends. However, they were unable to give any suggestions for what the rock might have been. She then looked online, but once again she wasn't able to identify it. As of right now, she said she's keeping it safe and hopes that one day an expert will be able to take a look at it and give her a definitive answer for what it is. Our oceans are some of the most fascinating yet mysterious places on our planet. Scientists have been open about the fact that we know very little about our oceans. For the last few decades, various stories have been told by people across the world of strange happenings. And the majority of these happen in and around large bodies of water. Many people have gone missing in Russian waters. This was happening so much that two researchers decided to look into these cases to see if they could find something. It didn't take long for them to be told about strange stories of underwater humanoids and alleged bases. Now before I carry on, it's important to note that no officials have admitted to finding such things and the majority of these findings come from amateur researchers that have carried out their own research. Regardless, others soon started to come forward and detail their strange encounters. What this left the researchers with was a large list of strange stories and one link they could make was that the majority of these reports happened close to lakes. Russia is home to approximately 2.8 million lakes, some of which are extremely deep. It's not uncommon for people to go missing around ponds, lakes and oceans. After all, some downplay how dangerous these locations can be. But the researchers soon found that many of these reports included strange crafts and even mysterious humanoids. The researchers made a link between these accounts and said that people even sent them images of what appear to be underwater bases. 
This is a theory that's been shared for some time now, as various eyewitnesses close to these regions have admitted seeing strange crafts flying in and out of these lakes. One of these lakes that solve particular interest is that of Lake Biagel. It also holds the title as being the deepest and most ancient lake on the planet. This has caused some to call it the Pearl of Russia. Giant lake monsters have been reported to live in Lake Baikal. Perhaps the most interesting reports from this region, though, is the vast amounts of unidentified flying objects. Interestingly, declassified Soviet-era documents have been discovered which detail the Russian Navy having run-ins with UFOs. Although these documents don't mention UFOs or even the lake in particular, the two are hinted at in the documents, and it's led some to believe that these crafts have been visiting this lake for many decades. For years now, mysterious blinking lights have been seen by various people visiting the lake. These mysterious objects are known by the locals and they've said they've been here for many years now. Some groups have suggested that the crafts are after something inside the lake, while others suggest they actually live inside this lake. This has caused them to become known as USOs. Many are well aware of the commonalities seen when reading over numerous UFO reports and what they tend to mean when spotted. The term UFO has become synonymous with images of extraterrestrial life, despite the term having existed in aviation for many decades prior to the alien abduction phenomena that helped popularize the term. Prior to its stigma with the extraterrestrial phenomena, the term UFO, which stands for Unidentified Flying Object, was commonly used in the military to help classify enemy planes that had not yet been accurately identified. Though it might seem obvious in explanation, many still can't help to envision little green men when the term UFO is thrown around in a wide number of military and civilian reports. UFO is not the only term that's grown in popularity within the extraterrestrial awareness community in recent years as there appears to be another term that's slowly becoming far more popular and shedding light on the technological capabilities. Of these crafts known as unidentified submerged objects, there have been a number of reports by fishermen, naval intelligence, and a wide variety of anonymous claims to extraterrestrial awareness outlets that describe sightings of bright lights or quick moving objects through the ocean that does not fit the design of anything terrestrial in nature, and Lake Baikal is said to be one place on our planet where this mysterious craft can be seen. These USOs, as they're called, have also proven to look remarkably similar to UFO sightings and disc-shaped extraterrestrial crafts. In fact, many sailors have claimed to have seen USOs rise out of the water and fly away as a massive bright light. This has led many to consider the very real possibility that UFO crafts also have the ability to serve as submerged crafts, leading many to believe that perhaps there are a number of underwater extraterrestrial research bases and these are scattered across the Earth and our current technology is unable to detect and discover them. What then are people around Lake Baikal witnessing? The truth is no one knows what these crafts are and what they want. Information on them is limited and they've never been photographed going in and out of the water. One interesting account of these UFOs involves that of a Russian Tu-154 aircraft. This plane was said to have been chasing an unidentified flying object when something suddenly went wrong. It caused the plane to make an emergency landing in the lake. It said the plane was sent out because these UFOs were getting too close to the military. And they wanted to know what these things were. However, the plane wasn't able to get close to the craft and some researchers have suggested the UFO shut off the plane's electrics and this is the reason why it crashed into the lake. Perhaps the most interesting account to come from the lake is that of the lake people. This first contact happened in 1982 and this was when Navy divers in the lake reported seeing what they described with giant humanoids. They said the beings were much larger than them and appeared to be wearing some kind of suit. The divers were interested in these underwater giants and so decided to go and investigate. However, the story goes that when they approached the beings, they were quickly thrown to the surface of the lake. And due to the force in which this happened, the team suffered multiple injuries with some of them even passing away. The Russian government, however, denies this happened. And that is nothing but stories. Within the last few years, SpaceX has become one of the leaders in space exploration. The most recent news was that the company was picked by NASA to build the human lunar lander. This was an honor as it would have been the first lunar lander since the Apollo program. However, it's just been announced that NASA has suspended work on the almost $3 billion lander. A NASA spokeswoman said the following. Pursuant to the GAO protests, NASA instructed SpaceX that progress on the contract has been suspended until GAO resolves all outstanding litigation related to this procurement. End quote. 
SpaceX, though, has a busy year ahead of them in terms of launches and are still working on the human Mars mission. Elon said the following, you want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. And that's what being a space frame civilization is all about. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. End quote. Right now, though, there's a group of people that are asking Elon to go to the moon and investigate a mysterious anomaly, saying that whatever this thing is, it needs to be investigated as it looks like a giant ship. The individual who found this craft is Scott C. Waring, a vocal UFO researcher who's claimed he's found various UFOs and ships in space. Although NASA have replied to some of these claims and debunked them as camera anomalies and other occurrences that happen in space. Regardless, Mr. Waring believes this large craft is the real deal and even said the first space company to reach this could potentially uncover advanced tech. He said the following about the discovery. When looking over the Apollo 15 panoramic images, I came across a photo that has a mothership in it. It's not a cloud. Clouds do not exist on the moon. So I enlarged the photo and saw that not only was it a ship, it looked very similar to the Starship Voyager from Star Trek. End quote. It goes on to claim that the ship in question measures over 10.6 kilometers or 6.5 miles. Amateur researchers have come forward in recent years and claim they've found similar looking objects in old photographs and they say this proves that there's more going on than what we're being told about. And in some cases, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is even editing out these images in the hopes that we won't see them. Amateur researchers say they do this because they think the majority of the population found out about these things they were just panicking. Recently, he, along with other researchers, have asked Elon to consider checking out the location, saying that this could be the discovery of a lifetime and could help us to answer the old age question of whether we're truly alone in the universe. This isn't the first time that someone has asked this from Elon. With all of the recent SpaceX launches, some watchers have claimed they've seen UFOs close to the rockets, saying that whatever these things are, they're clearly interested in our tank. As every time we send a rocket into space, these unidentified flying objects can be seen buzzing the crafts. However, these people may be preaching to the wrong person, as in the past Elon has been quite vocal about the fact that he's never seen any evidence to suggest that UFOs are genuine. He did say it's likely that consciousness might exist in the vastness of space, but also said if there were UFOs out there, he would know about them. Going on to say the following, I've seen nothing to indicate there are any alien civilizations whatsoever. I'd be the first to jump on that in a second, but I've seen no such evidence. End quote. He also went on to criticize UFO photographs, saying that the majority of them are blurry and you can't make out what the object is. Some people hit back at this though and said that the majority of eyewitnesses aren't expecting to see them, which causes the photos to be blurry. Also, as mentioned by photographers and eyewitnesses, they've said that it's incredibly hard to take a photograph of a UFO on an everyday smartphone, saying that they're not designed to take photographs of fast-moving objects hundreds of feet in the sky. Believers have said it's one of the most frustrating things that people say when talking about UFOs as until it happens to you, you don't understand how hard it is to photograph a UFO. For years now, UFO researchers have said the moon is a hotspot for UFOs, even going as far as saying it's one of the best places to see mysterious crafts. This has led to amateur researchers coming through NASA's huge library in the hopes of finding something of interest. One photograph that did stump NASA was this one. It's been called the breakoff and it shows what looks like a large object hovering close to the moon. Some have said it could be a chunk of the moon that came off, but UFO believers have said it looks like an unidentified flying object. Oddly enough, in the next photo that was taken by the space agency, the object can no longer be seen. The photograph is still in NASA's archives and various newspapers reached out to the space agency in the hopes of getting an answer for what this object is. NASA spokeswoman Lynette Madison said that people are too quick to label things as UFOs but said that the photograph is strange and that as of right now they can't explain what it is. The International Space Station is one of the most impressive things we've built. For thousands of years, early humans would have looked up to the sky and wondered what was up there. Fast-forwarding humans have reached a point where we've been able to place an advanced laboratory above our planet giving researchers and scientists the opportunity to conduct important tests in a non-gravity environment, helping us to understand things like what these sorts of surroundings do to the human body and how we can overcome them. 
These types of tests are important as scientists and businessmen are looking at colonizing other planets, with Mars being the one that's currently being eyed up for human colonization. It's incredible to think that within many of our lifetimes we could see humans walk on other planets, something that only a few years ago seemed impossible. NASA said the following about the International Space Station on their website. The space station is Earth's only microgravity laboratory. This football field-sized platform hosts a plethora of science and technology experiments that are continuously being conducted by crew members. All are automated. Research aboard the orbiting laboratory holds benefits for life back on Earth as well as for future space exploration. The space station serves as a testbed for technologies and allows us to study the impacts of long-term spaceflight to humans, supporting NASA's mission to push human presence further into space. End quote. There's others, though, who state that there's more going on around the International Space Station than what we're being told about. And this has to do with the countless unidentified flying objects in close to the ISS. Although NASA have said that these objects are nothing more than space debris and that every single one of these have been explained by NASA scientists, there's a group of people who believe that the International Space Station often gets visited by UFOs and that these crafts are not space debris as explained by scientists. This in turn has caused various UFO researchers to watch the live feeds in the hopes of catching one of these crafts. Interestingly, going back in 2015, a mysterious object was seen close to one of the International Space Station cameras, and it immediately caused theorists online to question what this giant object was. A UFO researcher by the name of Toby Lump was watching the live stream when he noticed a large object come into view. Thinking on the spot, he quickly took a screenshot of the object, and it was lucky that he did, as it was said the live stream quickly dropped once this object came into view. UFO researchers who watch the live cameras have said this is a common occurrence. This has caused researchers to say this is the lengths officials will go to keep us from knowing the truth. Even those who have an open mind on the subject have said it's strange when the life he drops from one of these objects comes into view. And if anything, it doesn't help NASA as it only causes theories to run wild. Some news stations tried to reach out to NASA and get their comments on what they thought the object was. But they reported that they never got an answer from the space agency. This is one of the more well-known photographs of an alleged UFO seen close to the space station. With believers saying that the craft in question shows a large triangular object, a craft that is well-known in UFO circles as being one of the most commonly sighted UFOs. These crafts are described as being able to hover in the sky without making a sound and when they need to leave the area they do so at an extremely high speed. Researchers debate who these crafts belong to with some saying that they are the new stealth line currently used by the military or some say this can't be the case as some of these crafts have been seen close to the moon. One skeptic, however, said the following about the object. Although at first glance this does look like a UFO, I think the more likely answer here is that we're looking at a glitch. There's been many times when I've been watching the live cams and I've seen something strange. However, this doesn't mean we should all jump straight to UFOs. There's so many other things it could be. For example, meteors that are entering the Earth's atmosphere. Lights from the International Space Station itself. Space debris and other natural explanations. People have and will always want to believe in aliens. At one point, I was one of them. But the truth is we have no proof that UFOs are out there, as most scientists can easily explain the majority of footages that it's taken. One believer said the following, This is one of the problems we are facing when it comes to things like UFOs being seen close to the International Space Station. People are so quick to deny it. I think at this point we all need to understand that it's obvious that there's something going on. I'm not saying that every one of these things is an unidentified flying object, but to say that every single one of them can be explained away as space debris is just ignorant. It's clear that government officials are interested in the UFO phenomenon as declassified documents show us that they've been researching these things for several decades. And when they close down one of these projects that's been assigned to UFOs, they usually open up another one soon after. It's clear that there's something we're not being told when it comes to the subject of UFOs. The more we deny it, the more we dig ourselves a hole. And the harder it will be to open our minds to things we don't understand. For the past five years, government officials have been dropping hints that they know about these graphs. I hope that there will be an announcement soon and that we can all start to move forward. Back in 2015, a man was hiking through a Budapest trail.
like a large spider, but went on to describe this thing as having legs and that it didn't look like anything he'd seen in the area. To add more confusion, he went on to describe that a large orb was floating above him during this encounter. He said the large sphere was hovering above him while he was watching the creature. He submitted the photographs and testimony to Move On, which stands for the Mutual UFO Network, which is responsible for reporting on thousands of UFO sightings every year. He said the following, a bright sphere floated in front of me. I took out my mobile phone and took a photograph. I only know that the creature disappeared. End quote. Except from this short message and photograph, we don't have anything else to go by. The only other thing that was said was that the man took the photograph on a Samsung Galaxy S5. Those who have looked at the photograph have said it doesn't appear to have been photoshopped and that similar sightings have been reported in the area. One UFO researcher said the following, we've seen a few similar photographs that have somehow been forgotten, but this one is definitely one of the most interesting ones we have. There's always a chance with this kind of thing that is faint, but the image does seem to show something there. There's no blur around the creature and you can see it's casting a shadow. It's not just Budapest where these spheres and all black crafts have been reported. In fact, it's easily one of the most commonly reported UFOs out there. Every year people come forward and report their encounters with these mysterious objects, saying how they can easily outmaneuver planes and helicopters and that they're able to fly through areas such as forests. Even the Navy and Army have had run-ins with these crafts, with some high officials even speculating as to whether or not these things are crafts at all, but rather a type of superintelligence that we wouldn't understand. This isn't the first time that a strange creature has been seen close to an unidentified flying object. Although stories of Bigfoot go back hundreds of years, it's only been in recent years that people have made the connection between these large creatures and unidentified flying objects. In fact, researchers who have looked into this have said that whenever a Bigfoot is seen, it's not uncommon for people within the area to report seeing a UFO. Though there are many that seem to refuse to engage in the conversation relative to this odd connection, there are important statistics to note about this strange correlation. After the creation of the independent organization known as the Mutual UFO Network or MUFON as previously mentioned, they've made a startling connection between UFOs and extraterrestrial activity. And this is surrounding a number of interesting UFO hotspots around the world. Oddly enough, it appeared that the third most common sighting of an alien being was that of a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch-like creature. Many people of whom encountered strange UFO sightings wrote witness reports surrounding that of flying saucers or bright lights landing nearby where existing Bigfoot sightings had recently occurred, or encountering a Bigfoot in a forest only for it to disappear like a ghost, and only a few minutes later to see a nearby unidentified flying object begin to immediately take off into the sky. These cases also do not include single encounters with the Sasquatch and only include reports regarding a definitive extraterrestrial account with an unidentified flying object sighted nearby or during the Bigfoot encounter. This could very well mean that the Sasquatch creature is another race of extraterrestrials visiting our planet and could help answer a question that many have put forward over the years, which is why do people not see Bigfoot-like creatures more often? Some researchers have theorized that the Bigfoot species are most likely fascinated with the forests that scatter our planet and that they could be conducting research. This is of course just a theory and as of right now the only thing we have to back up this claim is the fact that UFOs are usually seen where there's been a Bigfoot sighting. Nonetheless, it's an interesting observation that's been made by people that have studied the topic. One individual said the following about the mysterious encounter. I was hiking through Pennsylvania with my close friend when we had a mysterious encounter. Around 35 minutes into our hike, we picked up on the fact that wildlife around us had suddenly gone quiet. It was really bizarre because it was like someone hit a mute button. Around one minute after this happened, we could hear loud thumps and knocks. Curiosity got the better of us and we both decided to head towards these noises. It didn't take us long to find the culprit. The only way I can describe it is that the thing that made the noises looked like a giant humanoid. It was hairy all over its body and was smashing a thick branch against a tree. The noise echoed throughout the forest. We backed up real quick. Not looking back until we'd ran a few hundred meters and although we could still hear the noises we could no longer see the humanoid. As if things couldn't get more unbelievable, I'd like to feel like objects flew above our heads and off into the distance. Around two minutes after we saw this craft, all of the noises of nature picked up again with the smashing noises stopping as well. To be honest though, I wish me and my friend had never encountered this. Because the few people we've told the story to just laughed at us. It's why I prefer to stay anonymous.
The human brain is an absolute extravagant mechanism that humanity is still struggling to understand even in the modern era. When we look at the makeup of our mind, we don't see anything out of the ordinary. Seemingly made out of simple fats and waters, for eons it appeared to be a rather unimportant organ to human beings. In fact, ancient cultures that valued highly the organs of the deceased, and what to preserve them so they may be used in the afterlife would cut up the brain and empty it out as waste believing it to be of very little importance it wasn't until the discovery of nerve cells that human beings began to realize the importance of the brain gray matter was then understood to be made up of hundreds of billions of neurons in fact the human brain has so many neurons that their purposes are still being outlined in study today what originally went from a clumping of water and fats became the command center of the human body it became responsible for instinct, subconscious developments, conscious decisions, dreams, personality, behavior, emotions, hopes, information stimuli, and everything else that makes you who you are as a human being. All of it being run off electricity. You see, our brain is the most efficient computer there is. Running off the equivalent of 20 watts, our brain even at rest consumes 20% of our body's energy. Neurons send signals throughout our nervous system to stimulate cells and muscles, but react to these electrical currents generated by our brain. In fact, neurons are milliorganic wires that help to transmit these energies throughout the framework of the human body. Using the nervous system as a highway to deliver information data to different organs and cells. So if our brain, our personality, everything we are comes from electricity, it is not hard to understand then that perhaps this is the mechanism of our soul. Perhaps there are still supernatural secrets yet to be discovered in the design of our mind. So let us assume then that this is electricity. This energy when we depart is what persists. As we know due to the laws of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It will always persist. Two leading scientists have come forward and said that the human brain is a biological computer and the consciousness of a human being is a program that runs by the brain's computer. It's believed that within the human brain there resides around 86 billion brain cells. The soul is something that has made many people put forward different theories, with some saying that it's real and that it's the energy that resides within our bodies and that once we pass away this energy carries on into the cosmos, meaning that nothing really does or ends, it just passes on in another form. There has always been a debate about the soul of a human and whether or not it goes on afterlife. There are those that believe that your soul is what's actually keeping you alive, while others suggest the soul is nothing. However, recently researchers think they've found a new truth about the soul. They've put forward the theory that the soul doesn't die. It goes back into the universe. Dr. Stuart Hameroff, who is a physicist, and Sir Roger Penrose, a mathematical physicist at Oxford University, have been working on the quantum theory of consciousness. Both of them suggest that the soul of a person is in the microtubules of the brain cells. It sounds confusing, but the doctors think the human brain is just like a biological computer and the consciousness we experience is run by the computer inside the brain. This means that it will continue to exist after the human is gone. Both of them suggest that what humans think of consciousness is the result of the effects of the quantum gravity that is situated in the microtubules. The doctors said that when the heart of a person stops beating, the blood then starts flowing around the body. In return, the microtubules inside the brain begin to lose the quantum state. However, the quantum information that is in the microtubules does not get destroyed. Instead, it gets distributed into the universe. This could mean that after our death, our memories will enter the universe and carry on. Scientists have stated that humans may never be able to understand the universe. No one truly knows what happens when we pass. Many theories have been put forward, but humans will only know the truth when we experience it. Many of us have a natural fear of this. This may be due to the fact that we associate it with pain. But if this theory is correct, it could mean that life on Earth is just the beginning. Recently, a neuroscientist has identified a previously unknown part of the rain. Not only that, but it appears to be unique to humans. This discovery was made by Professor George Pack Science from Neuroscience Research Australia. This new region is called Enderestiform Nucleus. The professor has a theory that it existed decades ago, but has only been able to recently confirm it due to advances in medical imaging. However, the researchers are not entirely sure what this new region does, and so far it remains a mystery. The professor said the following, The endorynchidiform nucleus is intriguing because it seems to be absent in certain monkey species and other animals that we've studied. This region could be what makes humans unique besides our larger brain size. It's discoveries like these that show us that the human body is still somewhat of a mystery. 
Every year, scientists and researchers are making new discoveries, helping us to better understand not only our own bodies, but also the hidden things inside it, what they can do, and how they can help us on a daily basis. One thing is for certain though, and that's that the human brain is very complex, and there's still many questions waiting to be answered. Those who have seen a costume of a plague doctor have said it looks menacing. The main feature of the costume was that of a mask that had a beak attached to it. Inside here would have been burning herbs. Those who wore these would have been doctors attending to those who were ill. One of the responsibilities of these doctors wasn't necessarily to go into these places to help heal people. Rather, their main role was to keep a tally of those that passed away. Charles de Lorne was a French medical doctor who worked in several regions during the 17th century. He gained a wealth of knowledge and was the personal physician to members of the royal family. The main one being that of Louis XIII, who was the King of France. Charles is also known for being behind the creation of the costume worn by plague doctors. He said the following about the invention. The nose is half a foot long, shaped like a beak filled with perfume. Under the coat, we wear boots made in Moroccan leather and a short sleeve blouse and smooth skin. The hat and gloves are also made of the same skin with spectacles over the eyes. End quote. Historical researchers have said this would have been a terrible time to be alive. Those who lived during this era thought they were suffering because they angered God. This meant that some people would ask the doctors to hit them with the wooden sticks they would carry around. It's suspected that one of the worst things about being alive during this era would have been the smell. This is behind why the doctors would place flowers and herbs inside the beings, saying that it's likely the smell would have been unbearable. One of the problems with the suit, though, was that in order to breathe properly, holes were poked into the beak. Although this meant that an airflow was created, it also meant that the doctors were not protecting themselves. This led to the majority of them catching the plague and passing away shortly after. The doctor's uniform has become a staple from this era, but now police have said that on the lookout for one of these doctors, residents close to Norwich have said they've been seeing a plague doctor walking the streets with some saying that the individual placed their beak on the window and then looked inside. When the news broke, it caused a variety of different opinions to be put forward. Some said that the dark humor was funny and that perhaps the individual was just trying to make people smile during everything that's gone on, while others have said it's not funny and whoever is behind this has been worrying the locals. Police have come forward and said they're keen to offer words of advice to the individual and say that it's not an ideal time to be dressing up as a 17th century plague doctor. The person was dressed in the traditional clothing from this era, sporting a long black coat, a hat that had the iconic beak attached to it, and large boons. Some of the first images of the individual were shared to the Norwich Facebook group saying that they were worried that this individual was just roaming the streets and said that something needs to be done as children who see them are getting scared. Police have said they want to speak to the individual about their actions, but others have said it's unlikely they'll be caught as they haven't been seen in a while. One local who took photos of the doctor said the following, it's like 20 degrees and he's walking around wearing a full black suit. It looks ridiculous. It's clearly for attention because normal people just wouldn't do that. End quote. Another local said the following, I was just sitting there and I was getting angry. It's my mom has a phobia of masks. I know that even in the daylight if she was to go around the corner and bump into him she'd be scared. Kids would also be frightened and also my mom would be frightened. End quote. While this person said the following, people getting annoyed about a guy dressing up like this seriously are the worst. It's really not that big of a deal. People need to relax and enjoy the show. I think whoever is behind this is funny. It made me laugh when I read the story. It's not that deep and people need to relax. End quote. One user said that people shouldn't be laughing at them as it's not funny. Saying that if she sees the doctor again, she will get into contact with the police and work with them in finding the individual. A Norfolk police spokesman said the following, although no offenses have been committed at this time, officers are keen to trace the individual in order to provide words of advice about the implications of his actions on the local community. Should any further information come forward about offenses being committed, we will act accordingly. End quote. Another person spoke out about this, saying the following, I think this is hilarious. I heard about people getting annoyed about this, but I think the person is probably just trying to make people smile. Perhaps this was the Halloween costume they didn't get to wear this year. At least they made the news. End quote. Well, another person said the following, I can see why people would laugh at this, but it's not funny when you have children. Although I didn't see them, I can believe the stories shared by parents who said their children cried when they saw them. It's not funny and this person shouldn't be doing it during a time like this. End quote. 
Since the reports have been made, there haven't been any reports since. The community who reported the incident have said they're happy the individual was stomped, saying that everyone can now relax and get on with their lives. All across the world, regardless of the difference in culture or geography, there appears to be tales of ancient dragons having once run the land in nearly every nation. This could, frail or be, evidence of the large serpent-like creatures having once existed all across the world, only to be driven to extinction by native populations. One recent photograph that's been making the rounds on critical pages is this one. Not much information can be found about the image. It's said that a man discovered the strange skull deep inside a cave in Romania. He said that littered all around the skull was what appeared to be large bones, but wanting to get out of there he quickly grabbed the skull and left. After posting photographs of the skull on social media, many people were skeptical about the discovery. One of the interesting things about this discovery is that it does look genuine, with one person saying the following. Every year we're discovering new species of animals that went extinct millions of years ago. There's certainly no shortage of dragon stories, and what's odd is that these were shared by people who lived in different countries and wouldn't have had contact. The Chinese dragon and the European dragon are perhaps some of the more well-known ones, so who's to say that these legends and tales aren't based on facts? End quote. Scientists, though, have said that as of today, we have found no proof of dragons existing and that the most likely answer is that people of the past were confusing other animals for dragons, for example, going back many years ago. It was suggested that you could occasionally find the tip of a dragon's tongue on the beach. This caused people to start going on beaches for the sole purpose of trying to find a dragon's tongue tip. It turned out, though, that what people were picking up were actually ancient. Megalodon teeth, a huge ancient shark that would have been the apex predator of the oceans during its time. As is estimated, this giant grew between 50 and 65 feet and had a bite force stronger than Tyrannosaurus ranks. Others who saw this image went down a different route and suggested that the skull is in fact real. But people are misidentifying what they're seeing. This skull likely belongs to that of a mosasaur, a large marine reptile that used to swim in our oceans millions of years ago. Their remains have commonly found in countries such as that of Morocco that have rich deposits of these types of fossils. What most likely happened here is that this is partly a real skull and then someone had restored the rest of it to bring it back to life. It's interesting to see these restorations and although this one might not be 100% anatomically correct, you can see how someone hundreds or thousands of years ago could confuse this for a dragon. Regardless, there's no shortage of dragon stories that have been shared in recent years. One of the strangest mysteries found across England is that of the legends surrounding the existence of a number of water dragons believed to have been located around Sussex referred to only as the Nuggers. The Nuggers were rumored to have lived in small ponds and lakes known as Nugger Holes and were supposedly responsible for the destruction of smaller villages. The disappearance of individuals devouring and tearing apart livestock and infesting areas across England. This led to a number of local kings devising ways to have the dragons slain and completely eradicated in population by using knights as hunters to hunt down and slay the creatures in different reported villages in nearby bodies of water. A number of legends have frumfully supposed narcos, different variations in how the dragons were slain or outwitted had become popular folklore across smaller villages in England, leaving credence to the legends regardless of where they derived from. This has left many wondering if it was truly a larger species of megafauna capable of being portrayed as a dragon that lived in and around England infesting certain villages. Many researchers point to large-day lizards such as that of the Komodo dragon of whom have ancestral megafauna cousins that commonly fit the description of the Nagas and would have had their natural habitats in ponds and other bodies of water. These species would also have a very small population given that their ancestral cousin, the Komodo dragon, is capable of generating offspring from just a single member of the species. However, as many have pointed out, England is not known to have any creatures that would match the Nagas. Others then have suggested that the story is a hoax. But one of the issues with this statement is that we have a tombstone as proof that something happened. Following mysteries surrounding the legends of the Knuckers and other dragon-like stories across England, the rumors surrounding the Slayer Slab continues to be one of the center of stories of folklore surrounding that of a knight slaying the last Knucker found in England. According to the story, the King of Sussex believed that the Knuckers living nearby their collection of villagers was becoming far too powerful for any man to defeat. This led him going to a wide variety of knights in the hopes that a small army could be formed, but no man was willing to fight for the king to slay such a beast. 
It was not until the King of Sussex offered his daughter's hand in marriage that a single knight came to the King of Hopes for defeating the dragon and wedding the Princess of Sussex, of which normally would have been an impossible ceremony to perform as knights were prevented from being romantically connected with royal figures. The knight would go on to slay the dragon when finding it residing in a small pond referred to as Narcoholes. This was located near Liminster, earning the title of the slayer after accomplishing such a feat after the beast was defeated, the knight returned to marry the daughter and later settled down in Liminster for the rest of his natural life. The slayer would later pass away in the town and would lead to the rumors of the slayer slam. An unmarked gravestone located at a church in Liminster that has no name or markings on the tombstone except for that of a cross overlaying a herringbone pattern that led many people to believe it's the grave of the slayer that defeated the last dragon of England. Recently, Mars has been featured a lot in the mainstream media, and this is because big space companies hope to put humans on the red planets within the next few years. Someone who's been very vocal about this is Elon Musk, with him saying that his company SpaceX has plans to be one of the first ones to land humans on the red planet. He is currently working with experts and astrophysicists that are in the process of devising new ways to replenish the Martian atmosphere. Not only that, but they also plan to repair the planet's ecosystem to make it sustainable for human life, and they hope to have achieved this by 2030. If this fails, NASA have also said that they're looking at putting humans on the red planet, saying that they again hope to do this by 2030. But some of these dates have been pushed back with everything that's currently going on in the world, with NASA saying it's important that everything is understood about this mission before we just jump in. Government officials were noted as saying that American astronauts will walk on the moon again before the end of 2024 by any means necessary and that they hope to set up bases on the moon and use it as a kind of halfway point and then from their launching onto Mars. It all sounds very exciting, but some researchers have said that it will be at least 10 years before anything happens, and that's as long as scientists don't hit any snags along the way. Although no humans have made it onto Mars, some things have. And these come in the form of large rovers that have been sending back important information for scientists to study. However, every so often one of these rovers will send back an interesting image. And one of these came in the form of a strange-looking object that could be seen in the sky. Those who noticed the object said it looked like a UFO. Now, before we carry on, NASA and other officials have said that UFOs are not real and that they can be explained using everyday things like smudges on cameras, space debris, and pareidolia. But that hasn't stopped amateur researchers from looking through old images in the hopes of finding something strange. Those who have seen this object have said it resembles a disk, one of the most commonly reported UFOs. In recent years, people have been more open-minded about the topic of unidentified flying objects, saying that even government officials are now joining in on the discussion. As of right now, space agencies haven't released any information and if anything have disagreed with government's opinions, saying that they've never seen anything that resembles a UFO. But amateur researchers have said that these comments are hard to believe when there's so much proof out there. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that a strange photograph has been taken on the Martian surface. NASA uploaded this photograph to their website and said the following. This image was taken by Front Hazard Avoidance Camera Front Hascom and this was on board NASA's Mars rover Curiosity on Solar Day 2662, taken on the date February 1st, 2020. However, it's the anomaly in the left-hand corner that's caught people's attention. You can see what appears to be a black sphere-shaped object hovering in the sky, causing some to suggest that this anomaly is an unidentified flying object. As of right now, we don't have much information to go by, but images like these start interesting conversations about life possibly being on other planets. This isn't the only claim of there being alleged life on Mars. Perhaps one of the more well-known photographs allegedly showing something mysterious on the red planet is that of the Mars rat. Photograph depicting an alleged rodent was named the Mars rat and the internet went wild with theories as to why the creature was there in the first place. It was picked up by UFO researchers a few years back and they suggested that the animal was placed on the Martian surface in order to see the effects the planet has on live animals. However, Joy Crisp, who was the Curiosity's deputy project scientist of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the time, said the following clearly it results from things like wind erosion and mechanical abrasion and breakdown chemical weathering on the rocks. This is why they get these weird shames. End quote. Although the idea of going to Mars sounds exciting, there's many people who have spoken out about these missions, saying that it's going to cost us billions of dollars to do this. 
And when we're there, we'll have to completely change Mars' environment so it's livable for humans. People criticize these actions, saying there's still a lot of work to be done here on Earth, and those billions of dollars that have been spent on these missions could go towards helping a lot of people. Whether you believe in some of the things that scientists have said, there's no denying that within the last 20 years alone, we've depleted many things, whether that's general space on our planet or the consumption of animals. There's currently around 7.6 billion people in the world right now. And when you compare that to just 20 years ago, it's estimated there were 5.8 billion people. It's an interesting argument. And perhaps this is the way that officials are going to deal with this. By sending humans to Mars. The more we've studied Mars, the more we've learned about its various changes over the years. For example, many years ago, scientists said that Mars would have been uninhabitable. But researchers showed us that at one point in time, Mars would have had conditions suitable for life. This is evident in water flow that can be seen on the surface of Mars. NASA scientists have said there's over 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone. There's hundreds of billions of galaxies all teeming with millions or billions of planets. This makes the likelihood of there being life in our universe very high. This is why NASA and other space agencies are now making it their goal to visit various systems in the hopes of finding life. It's likely it will happen. The question is when and how long it will take. For all we know, there could be life only a couple of million miles away, or it could be hundreds of billions of miles away. And when you're talking about space, billions of miles is a very small distance. As technology has continued to grow, we find that there are very few last unexplored frontiers. Satellite imaging has helped to locate all of the lands on our planet and has helped researchers peer deep into the oceans. Due to recent advancements, we've even been able to see what's hiding underneath dense jungles. This has in turn allowed us to uncover a wide number of impo artifacts in hidden cities. However, it appears that despite all of our technology, the deep forests of the world prevent many from exploring these areas further and has meant that amateur researchers have made their way into these areas with the hopes of making their own discoveries. There's no shortage of mysterious photos. Due to social media, many of these photographs have been shared online, causing some to take it upon themselves to investigate them further. However, many of these remain unexplained as more information can't be gathered. One interesting photograph that's made the rounds on social media is this one, and it shows a strange man in the background of a woman's photo. The picture usually gets shared to paranormal groups on Facebook asking if anyone can reveal more information about the photograph. In it, we can see a woman taking a photograph of herself out in the middle of some woods. However, in the background, you can see a tall man looking directly at her. Some of the people that saw the image questioned what was standing behind her, with some saying that it doesn't look like she realized she was being watched. One person said that it could be someone who was following her, and as they were approaching she managed to photograph the individual. While others say the person looks like they're trying to dress like the slender man and say that this post is most likely fake. Regardless, there's no shortage of these kinds of photographs. And some have said that when they've snapped the photos, they didn't even realize they were being watched. Over the years, many of these photographs have been shared and it's caused some to come forward and share their own stories. One person said the following about their strange encounter. I remember when I was young, me and my friends would often visit our nearby woods. At the time, we were teenagers and we'd always go to the woods a few times a week. We live close to Elfin Forest in California, a place known for mysterious happenings and although the forest is creepy when it gets dark, we never encountered anything up to this point. I remember that me and my friend headed there one evening when it was still light, and as we made our way to our spot my friend said she noticed something off into the distance, saying that it looked like a tall man with a hand. When I tried to see what she was talking about though, I couldn't find the strange man. We joked about it saying that it was probably one of the many ghosts that reside within the forest and then we went on to our spawn. After being here for just under an hour, we decided to make our way back as it was getting dark. Just before we left, I was talking to my friend and I noticed that something had caught her attention in the distance and it was obviously something that had troubled her as her face went completely white. Without even turning around, it sent chills at my spine as I'd never seen this happen to anyone before. And it was almost like a sixth sense was telling me that we weren't alone. Before she could tell me what she'd locked eyes with, I quickly turned around and standing around 20 feet from us was a tall man with a hat. I guess that it was the same person that my friend had seen previously. This person had long arms and a gaunt face, but perhaps the most disturbing thing about this individual was that he had a huge smile on his face. We must have stared at him for at least 20 seconds and during this time he didn't blink once. 
He just stood there and stared at us. We got up as quickly as we could and ran out the forest. When I turned around to see where he was, I could see that he was just slowly walking towards us, still smiling at us and not blinking. We got out of there as quickly as we could and didn't really say much on the way home. The encounter gave me chills as this person seemed to have just appeared out of nowhere and something I can't get out of my mind is how creepy the smile was and the way he just slowly walked towards us. We've never gone back to that part of the forest. End quote. Another location that's said to be haunted is that of Dew Hill in India. The Dew Hill Forest is played by a number of strange supernatural sightings and disappearances. Many locals and tourists alike have reported seeing children running through the forest at night, appearing to be deformed or startling in their appearance. However, these claims have only become more and more popular as many skeptics flock to the site with the hopes of dismissing these claims only to capture a tremendous amount of images and footage of school children running through the forest at night. Oddly enough, the Victoria Boy School located in that region and established in the 1800s, it's rumored to be the hotspot for paranormal activity from the forest. There are no faculty members that will work later at the school throughout the night. And janitors and other employees that are forced to work through the night tend to have a high rate of turnover and quit the job. Many students during the day also report footsteps echoing throughout the corridors, doors slamming behind them and even sightings of a ghostly encounters in the locker rooms with them saying that no one will go to the bathroom alone due to fear of seeing something. Additionally, given the history the scores had when connected to old British expansion, some are theorized that perhaps a darker history took place in the region, giving birth to such paranormal occurrences. Today, the number of strange reports have only grown in the area, with locals saying that it's not uncommon to see mysterious beings with red eyes running through the forest loud screams that echo from tree to tree, and black shadow figures that suddenly appear in front of you only to vanish just as quickly as they appear. Ever since the experiences seen on the night of the Silver Bridge collapse in the state of West Virginia, which is located in the small town of Point Pleasant, many had often believed that the Mothman creature had been at the epicenter of the strange occurrence. In fact, in countless witness accounts, it appears that the collapse of the Silver Bridge had been predicted by many of whom encountered the Mothman, saying that this creature was actually trying to stop the event from ever occurring. Since then, various eyewitnesses have come forward with their stories of the Mothman, saying that although it's not often seen, every so often someone will encounter it. This is exactly what happened when a woman posted her photograph online, asking for help identifying what it was she had captured. People that saw the image immediately pointed out the similarities with the Mothman. She said the following, On December 22nd at 7 a.m., I was in my backyard and I felt something looking at me, so I looked up and saw a silvery luminous object. I thought it was a craft of some kind. It was fast. I was only able to take one photograph of it. When I zoomed in, this is what I saw. Has anyone seen anything like this? It was the size of a small plane and was high in the sky. However, it wasn't a plane. End quote. As mentioned, those who saw the image suggested that it may have been the Mothman due to its human-like appearance. The Mothman is a cryptid that's not often sighted, but every so often people across the planet do report seeing it. There's been a number of sightings that have been shared with the public and most of them follow a similar theme. Seeing a large humanoid that appears to look like a large bird but possesses a human-like body. One person said the following about the image. What is that thing? To me it looks like a giant humanoid hovering in the sky. As with most of these encounters, they happen so quickly that most people don't even have time to take a photograph. The fact that we have this image is impressive as most of the time people aren't quick enough and the event is usually over within a matter of seconds. Skeptics though suggested that it wasn't the Mothman but could have been a bird that was flying high in the sky. As some pointed out though, the wings don't look like that of a bird's and the eyewitness said this thing was the size of a small plane. People are still seeing the Mothman. In fact, locals in Mexico began reporting strange sightings of an unexplainable creature that fit the descriptions of the Mothman entity. The locals reported a creature that was described as being incredibly tall and standing at more than seven feet high, which fit with previously seen claims in the town of Point Pleasant back in 1967. They also claimed that the creature had two incredibly large and expansive wings, with red bloodshot eyes. Reports fail to mention if the eyes were seen as glowing or mere bloodshot. Additionally, other information was given such as those of whom claimed the creature was more manlike, whereas others argued that the creature was covered from head to toe in thick wool. One young student in the region even filed a police report in which detailed a personal and terrifying experience with the creature. 
According to the report, as the boy was walking home, he encountered the Mothman creature in the streams. The creature then began to follow the boy as it floated above and chased him for more than 15 minutes. The boy detailed that he ran home as fast as he could in order to get away from the creature. Luckily, he was left unharmed as the entity quickly flew away. This was before anyone else could help the student or confirm the sighting. Carrying on with the theme of predicting things, it appears that the region was at the center of the eventual swine flu outbreak, which was seen back in 2009. This has led many locals of the area believing that the Mothman was predicting future events and acting as a warning system for potential tragedy. Today, no further sightings of the Mothman creature exist in the region, but this hasn't prevented locals from telling stories of the Mothman creature. Another sighting of the entity was reported in England and was soon given the name of the Owlman. The creature known as the Cornish Owlman goes by many different names, but all accounts describe it to be similar in appearance to that of an owl being the size of a man and having a howl that sounds like a sustained hoot in a deep tone. The first reported encounter with the Cornish Owlman was made by a writer in the region. According to his report, he was following up on a story of two young girls who claimed to have seen the Owlman creature, saying that it was perched atop an old church in Mornun. This was back on the 17th of April in 1976. After looking into this report, he would write about not only encountering the creature himself, but that the creature would go on to plague his life, his friends, and members of his family. His encounters were later proven as legitimate as many years later a number of other individuals would report seeing the creature even up until the modern day, all describing the creature as being like a big owl with pointed ears, glowing red eyes, black pincer-like claws, and being the size of a man. Today, no one really knows how or why the creature targeted the writer along with the girls. But those who have researched the mysterious creature have said this thing has many similarities with the Mothman, causing some to suggest that the two creatures are actually the same. As of today, reports of the Mothman are still being made, with one of the most recent ones coming from USPS Wager, who detailed their encounter with a seven-foot-tall red-eyed humanoid. For eons, ancient man would have looked up to the sky and wondered what was up there. Fast forward to the modern day and various missions have been carried out by different space agencies helping us to understand our place in the universe. Although it's fair to say we know very little about the universe and the space around us, astronomers and scientists have done a great job at mapping certain areas. Some of the places that we study are those of moons and planets around us, with scientists saying that every year we discover something new about them. In recent years, there's been a special interest in the dark side of the moon. This popular term refers to the fact that the same physical half of the moon is always facing Earth, which in turn means that there's a dark side. This side, however, has been at the center of many claims, most of which include that there's either bases or strange things going on there. One idea is that on the start of the moon, humans have managed to build large elbows, and one of the reasons they did this is due to the fact that this part of the moon is always facing away from Earth, meaning they could carry out whatever they wanted without getting caught. It's important to note that space agencies like NASA have denied these claims, said that there's no outposts or secret bases on the far side of the moon. This hasn't stopped people looking through the limited footage and photographs of the dark side of the moon in the hopes of finding something of interest. I was sent this image by someone a while back. They said they were looking through old images of the moon, some of which included the dark side, and said that they noticed a strange object in one of them. They said that the image stood out because it clearly shows what looks like a large triangle object. Ferva saying that whatever this thing is, it appears to be hovering above the moon as a shadow can be seen being casted. The woman said the following, I am a member of the Australian UFO Society and a few people said that I spotted something interesting. Most of the time, these types of objects can be seen embedded within the moon rock. And these can be hard to make out, but in my opinion this photograph shows something large hovering above the moon. I have no idea what it is, but I thought I'd share it. This isn't the first time that strange objects have been seen close to our moon. In fact, during some of the Apollo missions, online users have said that when you zoom into the backdrop of space, you're able to see several unidentified flying objects in the background, almost as if they're watching the astronauts on the moon. With some users saying that the images are kind of eerie. It's these types of photographs that have caused some to think that the moon is a hotspot for unidentified flying objects. NASA have said that these are nothing of interest and that when these images are taken, they sometimes get distorted or show anomalies. And that these can sometimes look like UFOs. Although NASA have said that some of them are impressive, they've said that no further comments should be made about them as they show nothing of interest. 
As you can imagine though, not everyone believes this, with some UFO researchers saying that something is happening on the moon that we're not being told about. Another interesting story involving the dark side of the moon is that of Cole Wolf. Former U.S. Air Force Sergeant Cole Wolf is perhaps best known for saying that he saw photographs of a base on the moon. Cole worked at Tactical Air Force Command at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia during the 1960s and is thought to have been involved in projects that were classified. He was recently involved in a bike crash from which he didn't survive. Carl had made the incredible claims back in 2001 and stated that the photographs he sought proved that extraterrestrial structures were on the far side of the moon. Going back, he worked as a photograph surveillance technician. This meant he worked with the machines that process video footage. He claims, however, on one particular occasion he was asked to review some photographs. When he looked, he could see they were taken during a recent lunar mission. While there, another employee asked him to take a look at another photograph. These were the ones that showed a mysterious base on the moon. Cole said the following about the incident. He pulled out one of these mosaics and showed this base which had geometric shapes. There were towers, there were spherical buildings. There were very tall towers and things that looked like radar dishes, but there were very large structures. End quote. After seeing these photographs, he thought that the discovery was going to be featured on the news. However, he soon realized the news never broke. He then thought the discovery had been covered up. Wolf said on one occasion he was taken into a dark room where they put together images to create mosaics. He said the following, they were doing 35 millimeter strips of film at the time, which were then assembled into 18 and a half by 11 mosaics. Those strips were from successive passes around the moon and they would build up a photograph. We walked over to one side of the lab and he said, by the way, we've discovered a base on the backside of the moon. At that point, I became terrified, thinking to myself that if anybody walks in the room, I'd know we'd be in jeopardy. Because he's given me information he shouldn't. Then he pulled out one of these mosaics and showed me this space which had geometric shames. End quote. As of right now, NASA have denied that any of these claims are true. Saying that they are honest about every photograph that's taken and that people are looking too deep into these images. A fairy is a mythical creature that's usually depicted as being small. Having a humanoid body, small wings and in some reports is even able to glow. In recent years, though, people have come forward with some interesting photographs that allegedly show these creatures. Those that have seen them, though, have gone on to explain that they aren't physical creatures, but are actually interdimensional. This person shared these interesting photographs to their social media. When the woman posted them, many people were interested in what they were. The woman who took the photographs said the following to me, please do share the photos. I think it's important for people to know that we have many non-physical beings that surround us with love and guidance. End quote. After talking for a while, the woman went on to say that the reason she can see these is because she's trained in the Gateway program. Interestingly, I talked with another person who also said they have this ability. They went on to detail that it allows them to see these types of creatures and that they're more in touch with things that most people can't see. They said the following, after training myself, I've been able to see where these things are. I've pointed them out to friends and family and they've said they can't see anything. However, when I take photographs of them, they show up on the images. I'm not sure why this is. Perhaps cameras are able to pick up on things that the human eye can't. I've been training myself for many years now and it's definitely something that everyday people can't do. It allows you to see some of the incredible things around us. Most importantly though, this thing is real and if trained properly, many people can do it. When you hear about these kinds of things, it can be easy to dismiss them. But the Central Intelligence Agency have shown that they're very much interested in individuals who are able It surrounds the training of psychic soldiers and enhancements to the brain known as the Gateway Process Experience Experiments. The declassified document titled Analysis and Assessment of Gateway Process seems to be a written memo between a U.S. Army researcher at the CIA and sent to a U.S. Army operational commander located out of Fort Meade. The subject of the memo seems to have been the analysis surrounding the legitimacy of the Gateway Process study. Most likely, the U.S. government was unaware of what the Gateway Process really entailed and so sent an independent researcher to the experimentation areas to undergo the process. Learn if there was any legitimacy to the study in the first place for continued funding. The document then goes into the breakdown of what the gateway process holds, with the first explanation from the researcher being in regards to the human body's natural frequency of the brain and the frequency following response. 
According to the study, a form of enlightenment can be triggered in a person's mind. Both hemispheres of the brain begin operating at the same frequency, allowing them to communicate without any form of distraction and leading to a heightened state of focus. Although it requires a number of different techniques to reach the state, the main contributing factor in the study was a device that relied on the human's body's natural frequency following response. Additional techniques for reaching the sinking of the hemispheres included assisted hypnosis from a psychologist as well as techniques that match transcendental meditation practices. With a note stating that gurus who have practiced this meditation practice for 20 years have the ability to reach a hemisphere sink for up to 15 minutes at a time without any form of assistance. According to the document, this training lasts around seven days before a person is capable of reaching a hemisphere sink and is capable of furthering the study with tasks related in skill to the gateway process experience techniques. The researcher writing the document then notes that this is typically where the training and ability of most of the subjects end up and that less than 5% of the participants are able to move past these skills and into the realm of impossible to understand psychic abilities. The last and most advanced of all the focus states associated with the gateway training program involves movements outside the boundaries of time and space, but with attention to discovering the future rather than the past. The individual who has achieved this state has reached a truly advanced level. The document then ends with the researcher stating that the gateway process experience should be provided to all members of the organization for heightened mental ability, and then goes on to suggest a 12-step plan as to how to provide the gateway training to all members of the organization. Although the document fails to elaborate on the finding, the memo then states that the training could open up members of the gateway process to be attacked by intelligent energy beings if the boundaries of time and space are continually surpassed. Stating in quotes, subjects must be intellectually prepared to react to possible encounters with intelligent non-corporeal energy forms when time-space boundaries are exceeded. The fact that the CIA have invested money into people who have this ability is interesting. Those who have practiced alternative theories and who have worked on their brain have said these things are doable document went on to say that individuals who have practiced this can be used to gather information from such entities and the universal consciousness. Yesterday millions of people looked up to the sky and this was because the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn could be seen both planets came within 0.1 degrees apart something is noted is happening once every 20 years NASA said the following on. Their website, what has become known properly as the Christmas star, is an especially vibrant planetary conjunction easily visible in the evening sky over the next two weeks as the bright planets Jupiter and Saturn come together culminating on the night of December 21st. In 1610, Italian astronomer Galileo pointed his telescope to the night sky, discovering the four moons of Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. In that same year, Galileo also discovered a strange oval surrounding Saturn, which later observations determined to be its rings. These discoveries change how people understood the far reaches of our solar system. Thirteen years later, in 1623, the solar system's two giant planets Jupiter and Saturn traveled together across the sky. Jupiter caught up to and passed Saturn, and this was in an astronomical event known as the Great Conjunction. Others, however, allegedly saw something strange during the event. UFO groups have been posting photographs of a strange-looking craft that was seen during the conjunction with some saying that they were glad that they found the photos as they too thought they'd seen something during the event. Those who've seen the images have called the object a giant triangle, a craft that is well known in UFO circles for being one of the most commonly sighted crafts. The photos haven't been seen by many people, but those who have seen it agree it matches the typical triangle. Shaped UFOs Black Triangle UFOs are a type of craft that has been seen in our sky for years now, and after years of research, the most likely answer is that these crafts belong to our military. However, even though some believe that it's our military that owns these crafts, there's still many unanswered questions. For example, how are they able to travel at the speeds they do? How are they able to use camouflage tags? And how can they hover motionless in one area without making a sound? It's these questions that have led some to say they think that these crafts don't belong to us. After all, we currently don't have any aircrafts that's able to match what these crafts do. These black triangles are hundreds of years more advanced than our current egg. So where did these things come from and how are they able to achieve what they do? At this moment in time, no military has come forward to claim that it's them who's behind these sightings. But most UFO researchers think these black triangles are part of a secret program and this is their latest creation. 
However, sightings and encounters have gone against this, saying that these crafts had been observed in our skies for decades. In fact, there's even photographs of these triangles that were taken above Italy in 1945. So that means that these black triangles are over 80 years old. How did we have this type of tech during a time when battles were taking place using basic airplanes? As mentioned, it's one of the reasons that UFO researchers believe that these things don't belong to us. In fact, even military officials have come forward in detail at their encounters with them, demanding an answer for what they encountered in the sky. Many of these eyewitnesses would say that these triangle objects seemed interested in their crafts. Then when they tried to fly closer to the crafts, they suddenly vanished out of sight within seconds, easily being much faster than the planes during those times. Interestingly, this led to these objects being given the name of Foo Fighters. Strange technological advances were witnessed by United States airmen that claimed to have witnessed countless unidentified flying objects, described as a gar-shaped rocket-like crass and dark triangles on the late November evening back in 1944. The 415th Night Fighter Squadron reported seeing a number of peculiar sights along the Rhine Valley Ridge, north of the French-German border. As the night fighter squadron turned to attack the craft, the lights faded and appeared to have disappeared from the region entirely. This was one of a countless number of military reports that described similar-looking, unidentified flying objects, with one of the strangest reports being the witness account of Lt. Samuel A. Kransny. According to Kransny's report, as he was flying he noticed a large wingless cigar-shaped object with a reddish glow floating alongside him just a few yards off the plane's wingtip, seemingly attached by an invisible wire maintaining a perfect distance and speed. Immediately Kransny went into invasive maneuvers and rolled the plane while dropping down to get away from the craft, only to witness the cigar-shaped object follow his maneuvers perfectly and maintain its position relative to his aeroplane. After several minutes of additional maneuvers, Cranesley said that the object suddenly faded in color is shot off at an incredible impulsive speed away from his aircraft. So it seems these strange triangle-shaped crafts aren't anything new and have been sighted by people for at least the last 70 years. Interestingly, one person even captured one of these crafts close to the moon. The individual who took the photograph said the following, while looking through my telescope, I was able to get a good view of the moon. I live in Dorset in the UK and down here we don't get many days where we can stargaze. However, this particular night was a good one. The moon was in clear view from where I was so I decided to grab my telescope. I own a Celestron telescope and it's great for viewing the moon and planets. I didn't notice anything strange during my session but when I got indoors and flicked through all the images I took I noticed on one of them there was this strange looking object. To me it looks like a black triangle and though it looks interesting I've never seen anything like it before. I think that it may have been a piece of debris or an insect. I'm certain it wasn't a smudge on the telescope as it wouldn't have been this detailed. I'm interested to hear what people's opinions are. The International Space Station, or ISS, is a modern-day diplomatic marvel. Since the year 2000, it's been continuously inhabited by astronauts from countries all over the world, including Canada, Japan, France, Germany, and Italy. Recently, though, scientists said they discovered a life form on the International Space Station that's not known to science. NASA, along with researchers from the United States and India, announced that after running various tests, they had discovered four new strains of bacteria living on the International Space Station, and three of these are unknown to science. The four strains were found from various places on the ISS, including an overhead panel, a table, and a filter. After samples were sent back to Earth, the researchers started to conduct their tests, saying that once they got their results, it told them these were soil bacteria. The scientists said it wasn't really a mystery as to why these new bacteria were found on the ISS as astronauts over the years have conducted a variety of different tests, some of which include growing food. Scientists did conclude that these strains were unidentified species and were soon given the name of IF-7WB-2T, IIF-1SWB-5, and IIF-4SWB-5. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said the following, to grow plants in extreme places where resources are minimal, isolation of novel microbes that are held to promote plant growth under stressful conditions is essential. The whole genome sequence assembly of these three ISS strains reported here will enable the comparative genomic characterization of ISS isolates with Earth's counterparts in further studies. 
this will further aid in the identification of genetic determinants that might potentially be responsible for promoting plant growth under microgravity conditions and contribute to the development of self-sustainable plant crops for long-term space. Missions in Future The vastness of space has left it to be one of the last unexplored frontiers of the human race. With it has also come a wide number of strange and anomalous properties that even the most well-versed experts on the matter can't explain. When recruiting astronauts to begin a long-term scientific endeavor or missions into the zero-gravity nature of space, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration takes an incredible amount of variables into account to ensure the safety and longevity of the mission. For as long as research plans have continued over the many decades that astronauts have been tasked with conducting scientific missions in space, the continued research into the effects of isolation, zero-gravity, and the environment of the vacuum of the surrounding space on the human mind and body have been gathered to better understand exactly what it is the astronauts must endure. Astronauts have carried out many missions on the International Space Station. For example, going back a few years ago, researchers on board were able to find out that the changes of the gravity do more than just affect the astronauts on board the International Space Station. When the National Aeronautics and Space Administration conducted research regarding bacterial growth of salmonella in space, they found that for some strange reason the bacteria became far more dangerous after a space flight. Growing unrestricted in anti-gravity allowed the bacteria to become far more potent in any or regard even when compared to lower doses to the same bacteria on Earth. Many other strains of bacteria and viruses also demonstrated this rather horrifying behavior. And it has become mandatory and apparent that all astronauts must be completely scanned for any potential viruses and bacteria to make sure that a new strain is not formed accidentally in the confines of the space station. This means that though there are efforts currently being handled and made by the private space agency, astronauts can very well be subjected to far more aggressive diseases and illnesses while aboard the International Space Station. As astronauts are constantly coming and going from the facility, the International Space Station is also home to a few mysteries. The primary operators of the International Space Station's two components are the United States and Russia. The ISS is manned by a crew of six astronauts whose primary purpose is to conduct research. However, they're also in charge of maintaining the complex systems of the space station. According to NASA, over 230 hours of spacewalks, which is the term for leaving the space station in a spacesuit, have been conducted by astronauts since the year 2000, primarily for construction, maintenance, and repair. Since the lives of the crew depend on the ISS being in top working form at all times, it makes sense that they spend much of their time updating and checking its safety. For the most part, things usually function well. However, in August 2018, something unusual happened. Flight controllers on the ground at Johnson Space Center in Houston noticed dropping air pressure in the ISS. They alerted the crew who were quickly able to trace the air loss to a Russian capsule called Soyuz MS-09, which was temporarily docked after bringing three astronauts to the ISS in June. The Soyuz is a capsule of Russian design, which is primarily used for crewed spacecraft. It is heavily used in the ISS program to bring astronauts of all nationalities to space, and the MS-09 fed researchers from Russia, Germany, and the U.S., the Soyuz was designed in the 1960s and capsules of this design have made over 140 flyings. Any issue was rare. Upon closer inspection, this capsule was discovered to have a serious issue. A small 2 mm hole was found to be the cause. It was quickly plugged with epoxy and tape and the air pressure returned to normal. The astronauts were never in danger. However, there was a fair amount of concern. Where had the hole come from? Was it possible that micrometeoroids or other debris could punch holes in the ISS? It was extremely important to find out. The capsule was set to return to Earth in late December 2018. Before it was sent back, Russian cosmonauts went on an eight-hour spacewalk to investigate and cart a small sample to send back to Earth for study. On Earth, it was revealed that it was not a meteorite that made the hole, but rather an ordinary drill. Whoever drilled the hole had even attempted to cover it up. Theories were suddenly put forward. Officials from the Russian space program even implied that it was some sort of sabotage. Unfortunately, no one has come forward and confessed to making the hole. One idea that was put forward was that an engineer on the ground did it. But this is up for debate. Until the person responsible confesses, we may never know whether or not the hole is truly a mistake or some kind of malicious act.
Over the past five years, a worrying number of U.S. officials, diplomats, soldiers, and intelligence officers have come down with a mysterious illness. All of the U.S. diplomats documented the same symptoms, which ranged from memory loss, loss of hearing, headaches, loss of balance, fatigue, and ringing in the ears. The mysterious illness has affected some more than others, with some officials even going on to suffer long-term brain damage. It's gotten to the point that the Pentagon and the Central Intelligence Agency has got involved, saying that it looks like these officials are being singled out and attacked. An investigation by the State Department said that likely causes that of a direct energy weapon. Some of these attacks happened in places that don't have the best security, but the Central Intelligence Agency has said that two incidents have occurred near the White House. One of the most recent reports happened on the 17th of May, 2021. What's worrying is that the United States' best intelligence have no idea who's controlling this direct energy weapon, what they're doing with it, and where it's coming from. The Pentagon has now said they plan to create a sensor that can be worn by U.S. diplomats, and this will help identify where the attacks are coming from. One of the main questions is who is operating these direct energy weapons? A recent study showed U.S. intelligence that over 150 people have reported being attacked by these energy weapons, with them pretty much having all the same symptoms. The incident soon got the name of Havana Syndrome, and this is because it first appeared in Havana, which is in Cuba, and this happened back in 2016. The State's Department soon received complaints from over 21 employees of the U.S. Embassy, or reporting that they had come down with the same symptoms, including memory problems, loss of balance, loss of hearing fatigue, and ringing in the ears. At first, officials didn't take the report seriously, and this caused some to make complaints to the Central Intelligence Agency, asking them to investigate the cause further. U.S. officials then looked to Cuba and asked if they had any involvement with the mysterious, but they denied these claims. However, U.S. diplomats who have traveled to places like China and Russia have also reported the same symptoms, causing U.S. security to think that these countries may be involved. A former senior Central Intelligence officer, Mark Palamopoulos, suddenly came down earwobbing in Moscow back in 2017. He said the following, I was woken up in the middle of the night with an incredible case of vertigo. My head was spinning, incredible nausea. I felt like I had to go to the bathroom and throw up. It was just a terrifying moment for me. I had tinnitus which was ringing in my ears and the vertigo really was what was incredibly debilitating and I really wasn't sure what was happening. I couldn't stand up. I was falling over. Rather worryingly, he went on to say that to this day he still has these symptoms saying that it's been years now and that it's so bad that he had to retire from the Central Intelligence Agency because of this mysterious illness. He carried on with the following, I had a lot more to offer. I was 50 but I had to retire because of these headaches. They don't go away. End quote. This study also showed that other U.S. officials have complained of similar instances and some of these officials were even pulled from countries like China because they could no longer work. The attacks are still being reported with the White House workers saying that they were buzzed and have now fallen ill. It's gotten so bad that Congress has now said this is a national security threat and that something needs to be done in order to protect U.S. officials. Security personnel then turned to the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine in the hopes that they would be able to get to the bottom of what's going on. They had an answer. They said that directed pulse to radio frequency energy was behind the attacks. According to a New York Times analysis who looked into the accounts and what's been happening over the past few years, they said that the language is very interesting and that using words like pulsed and directed shows this isn't being caused by random energy from things like cell phones or other devices and shows that this is a direct energy weapon being used to attack people and it's showing that whoever is using this is clearly working. Some of these reports were leaked from the Central Intelligence Agency and as of right now Congress are being careful with their wording. Senator Susie Collins said the following there's a mysterious direct energy weapon that's being used and it's causing, in some cases, permanent traumatic brain injury. End quote. As of right now, U.S. officials are trying to track down who's responsible for these attacks, and the going idea as of right now is that Russian officials are behind what's going on. Although, as expected, they've denied having any involvement. Various declassified documents have shown us that the U.S. and Russia have attacked each other in some way or another, whether being physical or through things like cybercrime. President Biden has said that President Trump didn't take these seriously and that he will be the one to get to the bottom of his reports. He said that he looked to the Central Intelligence Agency and they've told him that they will get to the bottom of whoever is doing this. CIA Director William Burns said these attacks were of high priority. 
One of the countries that has made good advancements in direct energy weapons is that of China, with officials releasing videos and images of their latest tech. The power of these lasers is impressive, with them saying that they can cause injury to humans and that they can easily knock things like drones out of the sky. One Chinese official said these weapons are being used on things like the borders, and said that these direct energy weapons can take effect within seconds. Although it's important to note that Chinese officials have said it's not them attacking U.S. diplomats. Storms are a common occurrence on our planet. During some of these events, though, they've unearthed some interesting discoveries. One photograph that's currently being shared is this one. It shows a huge ancient road that was allegedly lifted by a storm in the Pacific Ocean. The poster said that many residents living close to Saplin Island, a Russian island in the Pacific Ocean, claimed that after the storm, the large roadway appeared. Residents reported that they were able to walk out onto it, but said that the event didn't last long and the road sank back into the ocean. The island is known to have harsh storms, and in the past fishermen and locals have even passed away due to how strong they were. Except for a few eyewitness testimonies, not much information can be found out about the event. Online news has said that although it sounds unlikely that a man-made road is lying just beneath the waves, it's entirely possible. After all, various ancient civilizations have been lost to the waves, including that of the mysterious pyramids of Yanaguni, also known as the Japanese Atlantis. One of the divers said the following after investigating the area. The larger structure looks like a complicated monolithic step pyramid. Rises from a depth of 25 meters or 82 feet. So there's definitely no shortage of these mysterious underwater structures. Some have suggested that this road isn't man-made and was likely just a piece of rock that got dislodged by the storm. Others though can't explain how a giant road somehow floated to the surface, even allowing people to walk on it. For on the reports, the road was allegedly sturdy enough to allow dozens of people to walk up and down it. Some did note, though, that the heir of Sacklin Arland is no stranger to these sorts of mysteries, saying that there's various stories of underwater cities and megaliths, and that in the past even mysterious creatures have allegedly washed up on the shores. All of these stories add to the mystery of the area. As quickly as the road appeared, though, it soon sank into the ocean, leaving those in and around the area to wonder what it was and if it will ever rise again. One of the last unexplored frontiers of our planet is not that of the endless deserts or impassable mountains, but rather that of our oceans. Every year scientists and researchers discover thousands of new species, new archaeological sites that were lost to the dams and hidden caves that are home to an entire ecosystem. It's for this reason that the oceans of our planet are some of the most fascinating places to explore. During an investigation back in 2007, as archaeologists were scanning the waters of Lake Michigan in the hopes of locating old recorded shipwrecks, they found a number of strange structures that began to take form on their sonar imaging. At first, the structures appeared to be nothing more than a large number of rocks and boulders and peculiar spots, only to be later revealed to the archaeologists as massive megalithic carved rocks. That featured a number of prehistoric markings on their surface. Additionally, the researchers discovered a grouping of these megalithic stones that seemed similar in design to that of Stonehenge, adding further proof that the large rocks had been artificially placed. When divers went down to gather more information, they found the rocks had a large number of strange detailed images that appeared to be carvings of ancient and extinct mastodons. And these were all across the surfaces of the megalithic structures. Unfortunately, further information could not be gathered as the archaeological experts were not able to reach the appropriate depths necessary and the experts remarked that they do not dive and said they're not skilled enough to gather appropriate information and reliable data. Due to this and the large size of the megalithic structures preventing the stones from being moved with ease, it appears that not only is it impossible for the researchers to study the strange rocks, but that any further information won't come forward until either a massive funding project is put into the investigation or an archaeological expert becomes a master free diver. It's not just man-made structures that have been discovered. Researchers working in marine biology have begun to see what can only be described as a mass whale evolution across the planet. This seems to deny all expected research. Whales are a massive part of the ocean's ecosystem, surviving off plankton and other microorganisms that make up their large body size and when they pass away. They serve as a significant amount of food resources for smaller marine life to decompose and thrive on. Because of their importance on the ocean's ecosystems, whales have been a closely studied marine animal. To better understand the secrets surrounding their evolution, history, and impact on the marine world, 
But for reasons not entirely certain, many researchers have begun to notice that the average whale song has begun to decrease in frequency. Due to their environment, whales have naturally evolved a form of communication that uses different frequencies and these are able to travel vast distances underwater. It's this communication system that researchers have said is changing with whales of all species suddenly speaking at a much lower frequency. As published in the Journal of the Acoustical Society of America, the frequency of the Sri Lankan pygmy blue whale decreased from approximately 107 hertz to 100 hertz. This was over a decade. To date, this is the largest rate of decrease observed for any blue whale call. End quote. This new information has led to a few theories by researchers to explain the sudden frequency changes. Some have theorized that the noise of large-scale boats has dramatically risen, forcing whales deeper into the ocean and requiring them to speak lower frequencies to be heard over the background noises. Other researchers believe this change could be mostly due in part to decreased whaling. Regardless of what the cause may be, researchers are unanimous in that the changes in frequency shows evidence of a dramatic whale evolution. There will definitely need to be research more heavily to better understand its effects on the whale population and what it could mean for their communication. All across the world are tales of mysterious creatures. Some of the most interesting ones are those that are encountered in isolated regions, such as jungles and places like Antarctica. Interesting story is that of Organism 46b. Before information surrounding Organism 46b can be discussed, the environmental context must be thoroughly identified. Reports of Organism 46B's area of habitation rests within that of Lake Vostok, located more than 700 feet beneath the glacial surface of the ice at its shallowest depth and roughly 2,600 feet at its deepest region. It's at this depth that the ice from the Antarctic glaciers are under enough pressure to melt and form deep lakes. It's within one of these deep lakes known as Lake Vostok that the creature known as Organism 46B resides in. A supposed leaked document surrounding the first attempts made by Russian researchers back on the 5th of February in 2012 while drilling to the lake surface made reference to the creature known as Organism 46b. The report itself was titled Organism 46b and detailed an increasingly bizarre story in which Russian scientists claimed to have encountered a massive colossal squid residing in the lake that could release toxins into the water could squeeze itself down into small sizes, take on weird shames, change its physical colors, and cause a mild form of hypnotism if a person began to stare at the creature for too long. Here are quotes from the supposed letter, written by a man named Dr. Anton Padaka. We encountered Organism 46B on our first day. It disabled our radio, which we later learned to our alarm was intentional. It's also able to paralyze prey from a distance of up to 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and lifelong friend was taken out this way. He tread water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its arms to tear off his head, then popped the remains into his mouth. It was as if it had hypnotized him telepathically. It shaped itself into the form of a human diver. We thought it was one of our colleagues swimming towards us in scuba gear. By the time the closest scientists had realized what it was, it had grabbed him and torn him to bits. End quote. Some variations of the legend claim that one of the tentacles of the creature had been chopped off, but that the severed tentacle later reanimated and strangled another member of the team. The legend ends claiming that there were a few surviving members of the expedition and that Russian officials captured the creature in an attempt to cover up the event. Fact-checking the story leads to a number of strange dead ends that come about in areas of documented factual events that otherwise should have been explored. Here is the completed timeline of the factual events of the Lake Fosthoek drilling expedition. Back in January 2011, Russian scientists Valery Lutkin and Sergei Ballot published a paper titled Vostok Subglacial Lake, Details of Russian Plans Activities for Drilling and Sampling. Valery Lutkin worked at the Russian Antarctic Expedition, Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute at St. Petersburg, Russia. And Sergei Ballot worked at the Petersburg Nuclear Physics. The document detailed the first and only public plan for a Russian expedition into late Vostok. Here is a portion from the introduction of the paper surrounding the expedition. The Russian Federation has developed a national project involving the drilling and sampling of Vostok subglacial lake, East Antarctica. The objective is to explore this extremely icy environment, using a variety of techniques to identify the forms and levels of life that exist there. The project is funded by the Russian Federal Service. 
During the time of the published paper, the Russian Federation had yet to receive support from other nations of the world as their borehole efforts were actively going against the Antarctic Treaty. With the United Kingdom and United States petitioning the Russian Federation against borehole due to the environmental impact of the sealed lake, their opposition was due in part to the drilling techniques used by the Russian scientists, of which included the massive use of freon and kerosene to act as a lubricant for the drilling equipment, of which would immediately drain into the lake at the point of connection. Despite the Antarctic Treaty violation, the Russian Federation continued with their efforts. Within the published paper titled Vostok Subglacial Lake, details of Russian plans activities for drilling and sampling. The scientists detailed a new piece of technology that would allow the borehole to use a transportation module that could be sent down into the borehole via new mechanisms and enter the lake. The diagram for the technology claims the module device and the borehole would only be 123 millimeters in diameter and impossible to send a diver into. However, given the secrecy of the project and the designs used, such a technology could have been sealed up to send a research team into the borehole if made slightly larger. The technology also shows evidence of human-sized transportation modules given that the module's designs had a height and width that would scale to fit a human body and these would fit in a cylindrical tube of a height three times the tube's width. On October of 2011, Valerie Lutkin, the co-author of the published paper, was at the Antarctic Research Station alongside Alexei Turkinov, of whom were both overseeing the drilling expedition. The expedition continued for several weeks up until the end of December before issues first arose amongst the expedition. The reason for why Valerie Lutkin first started his expedition in October of 2011 is that was due to October being the summer months for the Antarctic continent, keeping the location at its warmest for the expedition. These summer months only last from the beginning of October to the 5th of February. However, after the 6th, the expedition must be called off due to temperatures plummeting below 40 degrees Celsius. On the 28th of December, the Russian team claimed they had less than 5 meters left to drill before striking into the lake, and were confident they would meet their goal before the end of the Antarctic summer months. It was surely after this last transmission, however, that the team would then undergo a six-day radio silence for reasons not entirely understood. This was an article published on the 3rd of February, three days before the reported breach confirmation of Lake Wazdok. The world holds its breath, hoping for the best after six days of radio silence from Antarctica, where a team of Russian scientists is racing the clock and the oncoming winter to dig to an alien lake far beneath the ice. The team's last contact with colleagues in the unfrozen world was six days ago and scientists from around the globe are unsure of the fate of the mission and the scientists themselves as Antarctica's winter draws near. End quote. Given the last transmission, it was believed that the Russian team would have bored into Lake Vostok on the 29th of December. However, their climbs of breach would come after a nine-day radio silence on the 6th of February, of which was the longest amount of time the expedition team could have waited before forcing the end of the expedition due to winter weather. This would have provided the team with more than nine days to cover up any events that would have occurred shortly after the breach on the 29th of October. It's due to this that the sudden radio silence after the 28th of October provides a merit of truth to the claims of cover-up efforts and over a week span of time dealing with Organism 46B. Shortly after the end of the expedition, half of Valerie Lutkin's research team would end their careers in the Antarctic expeditions and leave the research team without further information surrounding the members. The encounter with the Organism 46 be led to the reported deaths of several top-secret Russian scientists and so many believe that this is why the document could have been leaked as a warning to other researchers in the area. Despite the far-fetched abilities of Organism 46B, reports appear to match a number of known cases of squid and octopus entities. In fact, every single ability mentioned by the letters the Organism 46B might possess appears to match many of the abilities found in deep-sea species of cephalopods and environments that would be similar in light, pressure, and water quality to Organism 46 Boliviano. Here is a detailed writing surrounding the theoretical ability of telepathic traits of the creature and how the ability could be scientifically explained. Understanding Organism 46B's ability to perform telepathic ability is both difficult and nearly impossible as the mechanisms for telepathy are still not entirely understood in the modern day. However, assumptions and data information surrounding numerous marine animals can be made as to what might be responsible for the telepathic abilities. 
It's important to note that there is evidence and scientific endeavors in the realm of neuroscience, and the ability to translate the neurons near random electrical impulse firings into readable information that can be displayed or understood. In fact, back in 1999, there was a research study by Dang Yang at the University of Berkeley, California that successfully recreated what a cat observes in the physical world using pure data retrieved from visual neurons. The implications of this finding means that if someone could create a technology so sensitive and accurate in picking up electromagnetic fields, one could remotely detect these occurrences coming from the human brain and work together the data required to translate your thoughts and brain signals into readable information. If we take this theory of data retrieval from the brains of animals via sensing electrical impulses and changes in the electromagnetic field, then there is evidence of evolution granting this ability amongst life here on Earth. Referred to as electroreception, it's a sense that humans do not seem to possess that gives animals the ability to perceive natural electrical stimuli in other forms of life around them. Electrical reception on Earth has only been seen to occur almost exclusively in aquatic life or amphibious animals that spend their time in salt water. Since salt water is a much better natural conductor compared to the surrounding air, this ability is so sensitive, in fact, that young sharks can recognize the specific characteristics and traits of electrical stimuli and they use this to help them pick up on predators. Given the fact that organism 46b is expected to live its entire life in a completely dark underwater environment, it's possible that the species could have evolved a complex form of electroreception. Here is a detailed writing surrounding the theoretical ability of hypnotic traits within organism 46b and how the ability could be scientifically explained. Squids are one of the very few species in the world that can camouflage and change the pigments of their skin so rapidly that they can make a variety of colors. Additionally, the glass squid species is capable of using barluminescence and it does this to temporarily stun fish and seemingly hypnotize them to be consumed. Given the depth and lack of light deep within the underground Lake Vostok, it's of a high probability that if a large marine animal were to exist within the trap lake, they would also possess evolutionary abilities to generate bioluminescence. Bioluminescence tied with a squid's ability to alter the color of the pigments of its skin could create season-inducing colors and shape. That could temporarily cause an individual to become hypnotized or undergo a seizure if one was to look directly at the creature. This could explain the hypnotic effects as reported in the leaked documents. Here is a detailed writing surrounding the theoretical ability of shape-shifting traits within organism 46b and how the ability could be scientifically explained. Given the lack of bones or large deposits of cartilage within an octopus, the species is capable of squeezing through small openings and squeezing their body size down to impossible sizes. In fact, a 600-pound octopus is capable of pushing its entire body through a hole the size of a quarter. As long as an opening is large enough to allow the creature to fit its beak through, it will travel through the opening with relative ease. It's for this reason that the claim of shape-shifting abilities of organism 46b are realistic to the species of which it seems to have evolved from. Additionally, a borehole the size of 123 millimeters would have been more than enough of a size to fit its body through if it were to make an attempt to reach the surface of the glacier. Here is a detailed writing surrounding the theoretical ability of toxic traits within organism 46b and how the ability could be scientifically explained. The use of toxins from organism 46 be seemed to stem from real-life examples of cephalopods using small amounts of venomous toxins. The blue-ringed octopus is an octopus only roughly the size of a standard golf ball but contains enough venom to cause the demise of 26 adult men. The blue-ringed octopus also has a number of other strange abilities such as the ability to use jet propulsion by funneling water to allow it to move faster in the water. It could be possible that organism 46b also possesses these abilities and is capable of ejecting venom. If the claims surrounding the creature are to be believed, then it has the following abilities that have allowed it to take out several individuals. Shape-shifting hypnosis, camouflage colossal size, ability to shrink, telepathy, and large quantities of toxins. Given its dangers and efforts needed to be contained by the Russian Federation as claimed by the leaked document, this could frail or mean the organism of 46b is one of the most dangerous creatures naturally living on planet Earth. Its ability to be weaponized for future efforts also seems to be a very real possibility, given the claims of the leaked document and other rumors that have surfaced around the creature. A cryptid is an animal whose existence is yet to be proved by science. 
Although that's the case, hundreds of cryptids have been reported by explorers and everyday people. In recent years, there's been a surge in reports of mysterious flying creatures. As with most of these encounters, though, it's hugely rushed, which means that they're unable to properly document what happened and take photographs. One person, though, managed to photograph a mysterious creature they encountered in Pennsylvania. The incident happened on the 20th of May in Washington County, Pennsylvania. The report was submitted to various cryptic websites, but even they were stumped by what the person had captured. The witness said the weather was in the 50s and was sunny. The man said he was traveling north of U.S. Route 40. He got distracted though as he saw something flying close to the trees, thinking at first it could have been an aircraft. However, when he looked closer, he could see the wings were moving. The man said that as he approached the creature, it then flew over his car. He pulled over in order to get a better look at whatever this thing was. He thought that perhaps the animal was something like a large bat as it resembled it when it was flying but admitted that he wasn't sure what this thing was. When it landed, he decided to move closer in order to try and work out what this thing was. He noted that the creature had black fur over its body and that its wings were similar to a bat's. A bat has one of the most flexible wing structures in the animal kingdom, with researchers saying that it's similar to a human arm, but instead it has a thin membrane of skin covering it. The eyewitnesses said that on the day of the encounter it was bright, and due to the sun's rays hitting the creature, he was able to see through the membrane. The creature then flew up towards the back of his car, and at this point he wasn't the only other person observing it. Other cars had pulled over to investigate what this thing was, with the eyewitness saying that another man had parked his car down the road and got out and started taking photographs. Both men noticed that this creature was powerful, saying that with one flap of its wings it was able to lift itself between 15 and 20 feet. The man then said the creature spread its wings and that it reached from one side of the road to the other, which gives it an estimated length of 25 feet. This is the original photograph of the creature that was taken by one of the eyewitnesses when it was in the middle of the road. After a few minutes, he said the creature flew off above the tree lane, saying that the man who took the images then ran after it into the woods. But he said he wanted to get out of there because he thought this thing could have picked up a man if it wanted to. As of today, this is one of the clearest and best images we have of a flying cryptid. No bat would have been able to stand like this and there isn't one that matches this creature's description and size. Some went on to call this creature the Beast of Pennsylvania and said that for years people have been seeing mysterious flying creatures around the area but noted that never has one been seen this close before. Some cryptid researchers who saw the image said you can even see the creature's skeleton through the membrane. Others theorized that perhaps this creature could be responsible for Mothman sightings that have been reported across the United States. There has been a growing number of individuals that have come together with new theories surrounding the Mothman and the possible nature of the creature. Given the fact that the strange encounters surrounding the creature have always been key in determining a future impending disaster, this has led many to believe that it may not be supernatural in nature, but rather that of a scientific advancement. After the encounters witnessed in the town of Point Pleasant back in 1966 to 1967, the moth and creature would not return for another couple of decades, in which reported sightings of the creature were seen all over the world. Due to other events that have happened shortly after the Mothman had made itself known, people put forward the idea the Mothman was actually a creature that was trying to warn us about these events, suggesting the Mothman should have been listened to instead of feared. The Mothman also matches the creature that can be seen in this image, as it also has small facial features, large black wings, and an overall human-like appearance. One skeptic, though, isn't buying the image and said that it likely originally showed a bird, although it clearly doesn't now because the wings are off and they suggest that it's been photoshopped. Others carried on from this and said that something may have been done to the photograph to make it look more humanoid. As of right now, there's still people that believe the creature is real and that various corrupted researchers have said that encounters with large flying creatures don't happen very often, but noted that more encounters are being reported. One of the most interesting places that allegedly houses some of these creatures is that of the jungles of our world. These isolated regions are home to thousands of undiscovered species, and it's been said that large flying creatures such as the Ropen call this place home. Those who have seen the Ropen have described it as looking like an ancient pterosaur, saying that it's very territorial and would even attack those that venture too close. In fact, early explorers were detail encountering large prehistoric birds that would swoop down and take out their bones, saying that locals told them not to gun the rivers or out at night as this is when they hunted. 
Modern day researchers have said that what people have seen could have been an undiscovered species or band. But locals and explorers have said that these creatures are different and didn't look anything like a bat and. Trial cameras allow us to see things when we're not around. They're usually placed on properties or in woodlands in order to see wildlife, or in some cases they're used as security. They work by detecting motion, so anything that walks past will trigger the camera. In the past, various interesting photographs have been taken, and it's a great way to capture an internal wildlife that you usually wouldn't see during the daytime. However, these trial cameras have detected things that aren't so easy to explain, leaving the owners confused and causing them to seek out other people's opinion in order to explain what they captured. One photograph was this one. It was sent to the Sasquatch Chronicles, a website dedicated to investigating Bigfoot and other large humanoids. The owner of the photograph didn't detail whether it was their trial camera that took the photo. They just said they wanted answers for what was captured. The image was shared in 2017 and since then those who have seen it can't agree on what it shows. There's some who have said the entity in the photo may be a Bigfoot stretching his arms while others said that when you zoom in you're able to see two sets of eyes, something that many didn't pick up on. One person said the following about the image, this is one of the creepiest images that I've seen. You can clearly see the outline of this thing and that the two glowing lights are located where a head would be. This makes me think that something is there. Also, it appears that there's another pair of eyes below the taller entity. End quote. Or this person said the following, I have a trial camera, but I've never seen anything like this. Sometimes animals will run or fly past and you get this weird motion blur, but it doesn't look like this. This image doesn't look blurry. It just looks like whatever is there seems semi-transparent or possibly hairy. I have no idea on this one end quote others though didn't think it showed an anomaly and said it's just a tree and the reflection you see is being made by the branches some experienced people though said that rarely will a trial camera give these false triggers and said that most people mount them to something sturdy in order to avoid this. Others followed on and said it may have been a ghost while some said it looks like a Bigfoot with its arms stretched out. Many across the United States have reported encounters with Bigfoot-like creatures, with some researchers saying that different areas have different humanoids. For example, throughout North America, many residents have encountered the standard Bigfoot creatures, which is described as being 6 to 10 feet tall, having thick brown hair, and having a loud roar which can be heard in the forest at night. While some residents have said that another large humanoid creature lives down in Texas and Georgia, and this one is known as the skunk ape, those who've seen it have said it's large as black for glowing red eyes and gives off a foul odor. In fact, the few people that have encountered it have said that one of the reasons they did is because they picked up on the bad smell and this caused them to go looking for the source of the smell only to run into a primitive looking beast that held above them. The most reported sightings have come from residents in Florida with locals saying the creature was often being seen during the 1960s and 1970s. After this, the encounters dwindled, but some residents did say that every so often someone will report seeing it. This happened in the year 2000 when a woman said she heard strange noises outside her house. She decided to leave some apples outside in the hopes of luring the creature in, and this worked as a few days later the creature returned and ate all the apples, and this was when she took a photograph of it. Years later, though, Bigfoot enthusiasts along with scientists have agreed that the image shows an orangutan. Nearly everyone around the world has heard of Sasquatch or a creature similar in design and behavior. This has led to a tremendous amount of reports, witness sightings, video evidence, physical evidence, footprints, and theories into the creature that cannot entirely be explored within just one video. Countless reports have been made throughout the years, some that have been explained and others that have remained. society named N.A. Tombatsi, wrote an incredible report that first popularized the Sasquatch creature and eventually led to his own reputation later being completely destroyed. It was common for Tom Barzi to find himself in strange, isolated places around the world as he would often spend countless days alone in an effort to catalog geographical strata, or find gorges or valleys in the hopes of making revolutionary geographical discoveries. As he found himself exploring the areas deep within the Zema Glacia, Tom Barzi claimed to have spotted a rather strange creature standing no more than 200 yards away from him. The creature, as he described, appeared to be that of a humanoid creature, in which he writes the following, unquestionably, the figure in outline was exactly like a human being, walking upright and stopping occasionally to pull at some bushes. 
It shows up dark against the snow and as far as I could make out were no clothes of any kind. End quote. The sighting of the creature continued for a minute before the creature ran off and disappeared completely from his sight. Baffled by the sighting, he quickly gathered as much data and information as he could. He noted that he was approximately 15,000 feet above sea level and gathered information about the bushes, plant life, and environment of the region. Shortly after gathering this information, Tom Barzi left the area to locate his companions. When he returned roughly about two hours later, Tom Barcy and his team scoured the mountain and found evidence of footprints in which he described as being similar to that of a man's. However, the feet appeared to be seven inches long and four inches wide, but were undoubtedly that of a bipedal creature. It was his written report and gathered evidence that would help lay the foundation of the Yeti creature and would lead the first expeditions into uncovering the truth. A man on social media posted a mysterious photo. He said that a strange handprint appeared on his wall and no matter how hard he tries it doesn't come off. He also notes that there's a couple of partial handprints below it. The individual goes on to say that he's seen many unidentified flying objects throughout his life and that he's even been in contact with these beings. He says that this handprint is definitely not human. And when he's tried to line his hand up with it, it doesn't match, saying that the fingers are almost two inches longer than that of a human's. He said the following, This is a video of a handprint that was left on my bedroom wall back in February. It only appears under certain lighting conditions and it isn't a smudge. I can't wipe it away. I tried to demonstrate both qualities in this video. There are also a couple of partial prints in the lower left. The proportions of the hand are very narrow, but what really struck me is that the thumb is out of position. I can't align my thumb in the same position as the thumb in the print. I have a long history with abductions and have photos of markings, handprints, and footprints, and some of them date back decades. Why is this on my wall? My guess could be technology. The aliens typically come in and out through the ceiling. I assume this is similar to the technology that allows UAPs to pass through water at given the orientation of these handprints. They were left when the aliens were exiting the room at the end of the abduction. My assumption is that they're steadying themselves or using the water to guard themselves upward, although I've never been positioned where I could observe. The partial prints are low enough that they were possibly the first place their hands contacted. My guess is that their hands exude an exime or are coated with an applied substance, which I'm particularly sensitive to. I have a photo where it irritated my skin and left a partial handprint on my chest, which I'll try to add to the comments. My guess is that's why handprint only appears under certain light and can't be wiped away. Rather than dirt or something leaving a mark, the assumed enzyme interacted with the paint. I've been silent about my experiences, which date back to my early childhood. But with the growing acceptance of UAPs, it seemed like the time to begin to share. People in the comments section were interested in the handprint and asked various questions, to which the poster responded with the following. There were some excellent questions raised about the handprint video, some of which could be categorized as you or some other human could have made them. At first, I wasn't sure how to compare my handprint with the handprint that was left on the wall. Then I came up with the idea of using olive oil and a printer to make my own handprint. To get a clean print of my hand, I had to use exactly the right amount of olive oil and press on my right hand with my left, mostly around the pinky and the pinky start of the palm. If I didn't press, there were gaps left on the paper where my finger and palm didn't touch. Once that was accomplished, I put the photographs side by side and began comparing them. Apologies for the less than sharp photo of the handprint on the wall. The readability of the measuring tape should give you an indication as to the amount of blur. This is due entirely to the fact that the handprint disappears except in low light. If I use a supplemental light source, such as what I did when I was photographing my own handprint or turn on the overhead light, handprint on the wall disappears. I demonstrated this in the video. Once again, I'm not trying to convince anyone, I'm simply sharing in the interest of disclosure. Observation 1, the handprints are of different sizes. The handprint on the wall is approximately 9.5 inches from the tip of the middle finger to the base of the palm. By comparison, my hand is approximately 7.25 inches from the tip of the middle finger to the base of the palm. If you use your own ruler to compare the size of your own hand, the handprint on the wall is unsettlingly large. Observation 2. The handprints are proportioned differently. The fingers of the handprints on the wall are at least 5 inches long, making up slightly more than 50% of the entire 9.5-inch handling. 
By comparison, the fingers of my handprint are approximately 3.25 inches, which is less than 50% of the entire 7.25 inch hand length. Observation 3. The handprints are shaped differently. The base of my palm is significantly wider when compared to the width of my fingers. By comparison, the base of the palm of the handprint on the wall is roughly the same width as the fingers. Observation 4. The handprints have different thumbs. The thumb of the handprint on the wall is parallel to the fingers. My thumb naturally arcs outward from my hand. Additionally, the thumb of the handprint on the wall overlaps the boundary line between fingers and palm. It's impossible for me to move my thumb into this position. Observation 5. Only one of the handprints appears to have knuckles. My fingers naturally deviate at each knuckle. There is no such deviation on the handprint on the wall. The fingers of the handprint on the wall appear to be uniform in width from tip to base. Observation 6. Different finger anatomy. Human fingers are never perfectly strained. The fingers of the handprint on the wall appear to be perfectly strained. Observation 7. Captured action. This is subtle, but if you compare the placement of the fingertips to the palm, especially the index and middle fingers, they are slightly angled towards the ceiling. This implies a downward pull on the hand once the fingers come into contact with the wall. Placing a handprint on the wall would be static, like my handprint on paper. The handprint on the wall seems to have been left in the middle of an action. What's really interesting, in my opinion, is the applied anatomy behind the handprint on the wall. For a human to put their thumb in the same position would require a completely different hand structure than what we have. The fingers are longer than a human's and are perfectly straight where ours are not. This difference would suggest differences in underlying anatomy as well. In closing, it's impossible for this to be my own hand. As you can see here, my hand is a smaller size and structured differently than the handprint on the wall. It's also highly unlikely this is another human's hand for the reasons above and as I've lived in the same place for almost two years and this print wasn't on the wall prior to its discovery. A bit of background, I've been abducted multiple times since childhood. I've documented large portions of it. This is the first time I've shared outside of a handful of trusted friends. That said, I appreciate the supportive response to the video and intend to share more in the days ahead. Once again, I'm sharing this comparison purely for purposes of disclosure and you are invited to draw your own conclusions. Earth's only natural satellite is the moon. It's likely that ancient humans would have looked up to the cosmos with awe and we have evidence that they tried to understand it. Scientific advances have helped us to better understand the planet we live on and also the space around us. The moon is one place that's of particular interest and every year scientists and researchers are making new discoveries showing us how little we know about the moon. Although countless detailed photographs have been taken of our moon, some of the most interesting ones are those that depict strange things and these have caused a variety of different theories to be put forward in order to explain them. One of the most recent ones to do the rounds is this one that shows what looks like a mysterious object close to the moon. As with most of these types of photographs, details are sketchy. Some say this is an old NASA photo, while others say it was recently taken by an amateur astronomer. Regardless, the interesting thing about this photograph is the odd-looking objects seen just above the surface. One of the first places the image showed up was a Mexican group that investigates strange phenomena. One of the commenters said the following, What are we seeing here? This large object seems to be casting a shadow on the moon. Is there any more information about this? While another person said this, this is an incredible capture and clearly shows something huge. This is one of the most interesting photographs I've seen that shows something strange close to our moon. Who knows what this thing is? One person even suggested that the object may have been a cloud of dust and that it was created by a meteor that made contact with the moon. NASA said the following about this on their website. The moon experiences a heavy bombardment or small meteorites that models had predicted. This is according to new observations from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft. The result implies that lunar surface features thought to be young because they have relatively few impact rates, maybe even younger than previous estimates. The finding also implies that equipment placed on the moon for long durations, such as lunar bases, may have to be made sturdier. While a direct hit from a meteorite is still unlikely, a more intense rain or secondary debris thrown out by nearby impacts may pose a risk to the surface assets. Others though said this may be an unidentified flying object and note that in recent years various different cameras have detected mysterious objects close to our moon. With amateur researchers saying that one of the best places to see these objects is via the International Space Station. 
as this man-made lab has fresh cameras mounted to the outside of it. Others even came forward in detail that they had seen mysterious objects while they were looking through their telescopes, but noted that they didn't have any camera equipment at the time, so were unable to document proof of it. This is just the most recent report in a long list of mysterious sightings, and although space agencies like NASA have said these objects are not of interest and likely fall under the bracket of space debris or camera anomalies, others are not so sure. And note that with all the recent reports of mysterious objects, perhaps there is some substance to these mysterious photographs. The government has admitted that these crafts are real, but we currently don't know what they are, where they come from, how they're able to travel at the speeds they do. What one place that's been featured in the news a lot is that of the dark side of the moon. The dark side of the moon is a term that's commonly used to refer to the side of the moon that's further from Earth. The side that we can't see. Humans were not able to see the far side until 1959 when it was photographed by a Soviet probe and the first craft to land directly in the far side didn't do so until January 2019. Despite its familiar presence in the sky, much of the moon's surface remains a mystery. Scientists have known for some time now that the moon's many craters extend all across the surface. Not only is the far side cratered, it actually holds one of the largest observed craters in the solar system called the South Polacan Basin. The basin is 2,500 kilometers in diameter, and it ranges up to 8.2 kilometers deep. It's thought to have been created by a massive impact from a meteor over 4 billion years ago. In the 1990s, a series of unmanned missions called the Galileo and Clementine visited the moon and took high-quality images of its far side. However, images were all we had to rely on until January 2019. A Chinese spacecraft called the Chang'e 4 achieved humanity's first soft landing on the far side of the moon, touching down in the center of the South Akin Basin. After a year of study, the Chinese government released the raw information gathered by the Chang'e 4, including a revelation that stunned researchers. The mission had discovered a huge metallic mass located under the surface of the basin. According to researcher Peter B. James, they explained that the mass was like if scientists had taken a pile of metal five times larger than Hawaii and buried it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass we detected. One of the explanations of this extra mass is that the metal from the asteroid that formed this crater is still embedded in the moon. The 4.8 quintillion mass is so dense that it weighed the basin floor down by nearly a kilometer. The implications of this discovery are huge. Scientists can now closely study the results of interplanetary impact and they can understand how foreign metals came to be on the moon and remain so close to its surface. The moon are nearest the most often studied neighbor and may hold many secrets. Symbols are littered everywhere. Symbolism has been used in advertising for years and one of the reasons behind this is because it's very effective. Key messages are put in advertising to make you subconsciously remember them. Again, this has been proved time and time again to be very effective. As time has gone on though, people are becoming more aware of these messages. It is even turned into somewhat of a game, with people trying to find these hidden messages on purpose. One of the more lighthearted sides to this is things like Easter eggs and movies. As people have become more aware, it's caused some strange symbols to be brought to light. One of the most mysterious ones was captured on a plane's engine covers. Images soon started to be shared on social media in August of 2020, showing engine covers that had the all-seeing eye and the Freemason symbol. This immediately caused people to question why they had these symbols on their plane and that they could be connected with certain high-up groups. Deeper meanings were then put forward by amateur researchers, with one person saying the following, symbolism will be their downfall. They have a problem with showing things like this in plain sight. They've been caught out before and it will happen again. Some people ask me why they do this in plain sight, and the short answer is they do this to mock us. People need to open their eyes and observe what's going on around them. End quote. However, not everyone got on board with this idea. With this person saying the following, let's use logic. If there is a secret group, are they really going to put their logo on a plane cover? Everybody would see it. The most likely answer here is that it's just one of the crew members messing around. They likely did it for a reaction and it worked. Not everyone believed this though and some even contacted the airlines directly demanding a response to the strange symbols. To some people's surprise, the company actually replied to some of these individuals. This was one of their replies. As you can see, the yellow tape can sometimes be used quite creatively. We've obviously got a few engineers who are fans of the Da Vinci Gold, but we've asked them to stick to emojis and smiley faces. End quote. 
Others, though, say this isn't the end of this debate and go on to say that symbols are placed on certain objects for a reason. But what do you make of these interesting symbols? Do you think it was just one of the workers messing around? What do you think? These symbols are the real deal. Over the past couple of centuries, archaeologists have come across millions of artifacts belonging to ancient civilizations. While most of these artifacts have been identified and accurately dated back to their time, there are some mysterious out-of-place artifacts that no one seems to have a clue about. These artifacts are found in unusual contexts and they challenge the conventional historical record. Such artifacts are often considered to be too advanced to have been created during ancient times. And they've often sparked debates among archaeologists and historians about who created them and where they came from. Out-of-place artifacts are described as objects that are found under strange circumstances and that challenge our modern-day understanding of history. One interesting discovery that was made in Ecuador has become known as the Lost City of Giants. Local legends once told of huge prehistoric cities built by giants. These were hidden in remote jungles of South America. This was a time when the world was supposedly part inhabited by giants, who in turn created huge monuments pointing to their existence. Modern-day explorers heard of these stories and looking to find facts behind fiction turned to local tribes familiar with these jungles. It turns out these tribes knew exactly what the explorers were talking about and led them to what was now a holy site and a place of worship to the powerful spirits of this lost city of giants. Fighting their way through dense undergrowth and thick trees in a remote part of Ecuador, the researchers were taken to a jungle clearing. There before them was a set of megalithic structures, massive prehistoric monuments built up of enormous stones. The largest was an 80 meter by 80 meter wide pyramid that was made out of boulders that couldn't have been less than two tons each. All the stones were perfectly aligned with sharp edges and a slope built at a 60 degree angle and also having the look of a paved wall. These looked to be sculpted by human hands. To add further to this speculation, whilst plants had over time grown across these monuments, the researchers discovered that beneath these slow-growing plants the stones were held together by the thick layer of an impenetrable substance akin to concrete, and similar to materials used in the era of construction of the Mesoamerican pyramids. And it wasn't just these giant pyramid structures discovered in the city of giants that were most significant to the researchers. Further impressive discoveries were the things that possibly helped build these monuments in the first place. Oversized and manufactured tools which were found lying nearby and clearly centuries old. These were hammer-shaped objects. Solid stone hammerheads whose wooden handles had deteriorated over time. But with the addition of the handle, it would have been impossible for the local people of the time to use these objects in any practical way, let alone build such precise structures to stand the test of time. For these archaeologists that found the lost city of Jints, these clearly unnatural formations are the most material evidence that show that in the past, Jints did perhaps inhabit the earth, leaving huge cities and megalithic structures in their wake. Debates still rage on, however, following this discovery. Researchers look to the Ecuadorian Ministry of Culture to help them with their findings and prompt further research. Strangely though, instead, the government saw this pyramid-shaped structure as a natural formation, ignoring all the other evidence. However, the team that helped bring this discovery to light believe that this many indicators the point of the truth. The colossal boulders, the intricate construction, and oversized tools are all clear signs that this was not a natural formation, but a clear sign that in the distant past humans of mythical sizes walked the earth, especially in the lost city of giants. Over 250,000 individuals are reported missing every year, with estimates of actual missing person cases that are left unreported pushing that total to more than 300,000. With that many reports, it's no wonder that a vast majority of these cases are left unsolved. In some of these cases, though, law enforcement are able to unravel the mystery of what happened to the individual. But if history has told us anything, it's that sometimes we should look closer to home when investigating these cases. The case of Brittany Gosney and her son only lasted for a few days. Brittany Gosney had approached authorities and reported that her six-year-old son went missing. This was around the Ohio area. The fire was created on Sunday, but the story soon took a turn later on that day. Police were informed that the child wasn't actually missing, but rather something had gone down between the mother and child, whose name was James. After being tipped off, the officials made their way towards a lake, and once they reached here, they soon started to make a sweep of the area, hoping that they wouldn't find anything. The officials said that as of right now, the boy has not been found. Shortly after this investigation, though, the officers started to unravel what had happened. 
According to court documents, Gosney told investigators with the Middletown Division of Police that she tried to drop off James out the rush from Park in Preble County on Friday. However, when he tried to get back in the car, she sped off. As if this wasn't bad enough, she then ran him over and dragged him for what was described as a long distance. She then left the scene but returned around 30 minutes later to inspect what happened. Once she arrived, she could see the young James was lying down in the parking lot with a head injury. The poor boy had passed away due to the injuries inflicted. According to a criminal complaint that was filed with the police station, the mother had put the boy in the van, took him back to their house, and then placed him in an upstairs bedroom. The next day, she and her boyfriend, 42-year-old James Hamilton, took a short trip out to the nearby river, where it's reported that they took out the young boy and placed him in the water. Both have been charged with tampering with evidence and murder. What's sad is that the Middletown Police Chief David Burke said the mother showed no remorse at this time and that they also haven't been able to establish a motive. Two more children were found to be living in the household, but police have said they've been moved and placed somewhere else. The heartbreaking thing about this case is that many parents lose their children due to things that are out of their control. For example, many people go missing in things like national parks due to the environment, things they can't do anything about. But in this case, the mother went out of her way to cause harm to her son, knowing that she could easily overpower him due to her size and the fact she was using her car. This is one of those cases that could have been prevented. Another sad case is that of the Martin family disappearance. On December 7, 1958, Ken and Barbara Martin drove from their home in Portland, Oregon to Columbia Gorge in Hood River, Oregon. They went to look for a Christmas tree with their three daughters, 14-year-old Barbara, 12-year-old Virginia, and 10-year-old Sue. No one would ever see them alive again. According to reports, family left their home around 1 p.m. Friends began calling the police when they didn't return after a while, but no one took the case right away. After a few days, police found a credit card receipt showing that Ken brought gas near the gorge. Based on tire drags, the Hood River Sheriff believed that while trying to back up in the parking lot, they must have accidentally driven off the cliff into the Columbia River. Detective Walter Graven thought the family trips seemed odd and he continued to investigate despite what the sheriff had concluded. While inspecting the tire tracks, he also found paint chips nearby. He sent the chips to be examined at an FBI crime lab and they confirmed that the chips matched the Martins' family car. Someone found a gun close by near a car that had been stolen and abandoned. Although they turned it over to the police, the gun was never used as evidence in the case. It was covered in blood, leading Graven to believe it was used to beat someone to death. Graven eventually connected the gun to the parent's son, 28-year-old Donald Martin, who was in the Navy at the time. Years before this, Donald had been accused of stealing a gun while working in a sporting goods store. It was believed that this was the gun that he supposedly stole in. Graven found out that Donald didn't have a great relationship with his family and that he'd never came back to Oregon to look for his family. Graven believed that Donald must have had something to do with the family's disappearance because no one else seemed to have any motive. In May 1959, the bodies of Virginia and Sue were found floating in the river. According to the report, the death of both girls was caused by drowning. Virginia also had a hole in her head which only led to more questions. Unfortunately, it was never confirmed what caused the hole. Donald didn't attend the memorial service, but he did meet with Detective Graven in June. He told Graven he didn't know of anyone who wanted to hurt his family, but that he didn't believe it couldn't have been an accident. The story stayed in the news for almost a year after the family's disappearance. Many investigators and journalists have tried to find out what happened, but no one has been successful. Graven has always said the case probably wouldn't be solved unless they could find the car and the other bodies. Before he died in 1988, he gave his notes to Jay Waterbury who worked with the Dallas Police Department. Waterbury has hoped that one day this case will be solved. Soldiers are easily some of the bravest people in the planet. They're sent to places that many of us will never visit and see man-made horrors play out in front of their eyes. Although soldiers have hundreds of stories to tell, some of the most interesting ones are those that detail mysterious creatures. One interesting account is that of military soldiers that encountered a mysterious being. The story goes that back in 2002, a military unit encountered a giant being in Kandahar. American soldiers were trekking up a mountainside when they saw signs of a lodge being. These included things like lodge footprints. As the soldiers went to investigate the area, they said they could hear loud grunting noises. Shortly after this, the team said they were ambushed by a large humanoid. They reported it was around 13 feet tall and had red hair. 
It had six fingers on each hand and was hostile towards the military unit. One of the men unfortunately didn't make it as he was pierced by the giant's large spear. The giant was said to be dressed in animal skins. The reason the team was in the area was because another military unit had gone missing. And so a rescue mission was planned to see what happened and hopefully bring back any survivors. After the soldier got pierced with the spear, it then turned his attention to the rest of the group. The others quickly fired at the giant, hitting it all over its body. They continued to do this until the giant dropped to its knees. After this, the unit reported it to their superiors. They gave them clear instructions to hide the body and stay near it, ensuring that no one nearby saw what they were trying to hide. After this, the body was taken to a secure location, and high officials told the soldiers that they would never to speak of this again. Another strange encounter is that of the jinn. According to the ancient scriptures seen throughout the Middle East, the jinn are often referred to as the people of the fire and seem to be as old as the universe itself. Scholars have noted that the word jinn most likely comes from the Arabic root word jan, to which roughly translates to mean to hide or to conceal, which gives us a clue as to the nature of the jinn of which we're often regarded as creatures of whom would attempt to conceal themselves from man. The Quran then clarifies that the existence of the jinn first came about during the act of the creation of the universe and that the jinn came into existence after being created from a smokeless fire, similar to that of electricity and much purer energy. These stories in fact match that of the Judaism interpretation of the creation of Lucifer, of whom was also crafted from fire, and not that of light similar to other angels. The jinn were then described as being more accurately referred to as the people of the fire, and that they would exist in a plane that rested slightly above us but still within our world, slightly out of the reach of any natural senses. Additional information as to the origin and spreading of the jinn gets a little hazy, but references are made of the jinn assisting ruthless kings and rulers and even helping with the building and construction of many cities and places of immense power. Given the fact that the jinn are often described as being unable to be seen or sensed by our natural senses and constantly attempting to evade detection of all kind, it's no surprise then that the main focus of the power of the jinn circles around its ability to take any form. It's believed that the jinn have the ability to take the form of any animal or person and that they often use these tactics to get away from someone pursuing them or to trick loved ones of an individual into doing something for them. The only way for someone to be certain of whether or not the creature is a jinn is to look into his eyes. According to legends, the jinn's eyes are constantly blazing like a fire and that they can be seen in the eyes of any form that they take. Jinns also possess supernatural abilities such as that of possessing an individual to take control of their body, being able to predict the future and being able to perform superhuman themes that are otherwise unexplainable in the physical world such as speed, flying vast intelligence fluency in any language and a vast amount of unending skills. Definitely seen as one of the strangest reports of modern-day encounters with the jinn was a military encounter seen in Iraq back in June of 2003. An Iraqi soldier and other fighters were stationed at the second floor of a police station to assist with further attacks against the police. This was between the locals and the law enforcement of the city. A lot of people were confused by the sudden attacks by the police. And so one of the main purposes of the Iraqi army assisting with safety was to uncover the reasons as to why such disturbances were taking place. In one of the reports taken by an Iraqi military squad station for 24-7 surveillance, they claim they encountered several jinn, of whom were watching and patrolling the station. The report details that they believed the individuals to be jinn due to the fact they had glowing red eyes and seemed completely unfazed by the bright surveillance lights used to blind pass buyers of whom attempted to get close to the station at night. Shortly after the report was filed, the whole entire station was attacked and every soldier and police in the department passed away from injuries. It then circulated that the jinn were at the center of the attacks, and the majority of the disturbances were caused by the jinn waging plans of attack. After the report surfaced, the attack stopped with many locals claiming that the jinn went back into hiding after they were discovered. The military and Bigfoot The military and Bigfoot seemed to have a strange relationship. One of the last places you'd expect to see a Bigfoot would be near a military base. Yet various stories have been told of these ancient creatures getting into these secret locations. And not only that, but shortly after seeing this creature there appears to be various reports of UFO sightings throughout the area. Oddly enough, according to MUFON or the Mutual UFO Network, it appeared that the third most common sighting of an alien being was that of a Bigfoot. 
Many people who encounter strange UFO sightings wrote witness reports of sources landing in a Bigfoot coming out or encountering a Bigfoot in the forest only for it to disappear like a ghost. And moments later to see a nearby unidentified flying object begin to immediately take off into the sky. These cases also do not include single encounters with the Sasquatch and only include reports regarding a definitive extraterrestrial account. It's for this reason that Bigfoot might be an extraterrestrial creature instead of a naturally evolved one. American soldiers have gone on to detail seeing these creatures around bases and while on missions. One of the most famous creatures that resembled a Bigfoot was given the name of Rock Aim, referred to by American soldiers as Rock Aims. Consistent reports were made by a wide number of platoons of giant humanoid creatures. One veteran wrote the following report. Serving with the 101st Airborne in the mountains of Vietnam, I saw the rock apes on many occasions. They were as large as a big man and usually were in small groups of two or three unlike Bigfoot, but were bigger than most men and smaller than Bigfoot. They were spotted on days, but would also set off our trip flares at night. End quote. So what do you make of these three interesting stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Satellite imagery helps us to explore hard-to-reach places, including that of oceans, jungles, and snowy regions. One place of interest is that of Antarctica. Scientists and researchers have made countless discoveries in this region helping them to better understand its environment and the mysterious life forms that call this place home. Some might think that after centuries of technological advancements, we would have finally begun to understand the planet we live on and the impact that we have on it. This couldn't be further from the case, and while at times it seems that this may be true, just when we think we know as much as we can, a discovery will turn our knowledge on its head and make us realize that despite the wealth of information out there, there is still so much that we don't yet know. Although in recent years, various interesting discoveries have been made in Antarctica, which I'll touch on shortly, it's perhaps the more mysterious ones that grab people's attention. For years now, people have claimed that Antarctica is home to many mysteries, including secret bases, mysterious archaeological discoveries, and advanced crafts. As of right now, governments and scientists have said there's no proof that mysterious crafts have been found here. And although that may be the case, it hasn't stopped people from finding strange things in the Antarctic ice. One of the most recent ones being that of a strange structure that allegedly appeared with another object that's dividing people. With some saying that it's a secret base, while others have said it appears to be an unidentified flying object and that you can see this casting a shadow. The first object is this one, and it was posted online not too long ago, and shows what looks like a boomerang-shaped structure on top of the ice. Theories for what this is range from a secret base to an archaeological artifact that's now visible due to melting ice. Some theorists believe that advanced ancient civilizations may have reached Antarctica in the past, and due to melting ice and glaciers, there may be countless archaeological artifacts waiting to be found. They point to these strange-looking structures as evidence of this theory. And even Garn has said that some of these areas that show these mysterious artifacts sometimes get blacked out, proving that they don't want people knowing about these discoveries. The reason why some people don't think these are normal research bases is because they suddenly show up and that before this there was no sign of them. As with most of these discoveries though, we have limited information and photographs to go by, so what these depict is up for debate. Another discovery that caused various ideas to be put forward is this one. Someone posted this video online showing what looks like either a small building or a flying craft, saying that they couldn't explain what it was and wondered if anyone had seen anything similar. As mentioned earlier, theories for what this thing is range from a small research station to an unidentified flying object. One person commented on the video saying the following, why would a tiny research base be in the middle of Antarctica like this? Could it be a weather station? Well, another person said the following, I know that some people are saying that it looks like a building, but to me both of the objects appear to be hovering, as you can see both of them casting a shadow on the ground. I'm not saying that these are unidentified flying objects, but it does look like they're flying. I've seen similar looking structures in Antarctica and no one seems to know where these things come from. Same as the other structure, people can't agree on what this thing is, leaving some to believe that perhaps there are secret bases or objects in Antarctica that we're not being told about. Scientists recently announced that they carried out tests on a subglacial lake and found them to be teeming with life. Antarctica is known for being a place where life does not flourish, although creatures such as penguins, seals, and krill do inhabit the icy continent. 
Most of these species do not live there all year round and migrate elsewhere to escape the brutal winter. When researchers visit, the conditions are so extreme that they must take intense precautions to prevent hypothermia. The last thing that any of these researchers expected to find was an area actually teeming with life, but that's exactly what they stumbled upon. Under an ice sheet around 3,500 feet deep lies a lake around 50 feet deep. Researchers interested in studying this lake used drills and hot water to break through the layer of ice and they took 15 gallons of water samples and a sediment core over 15 feet long from the dark waters below what these samples revealed surprised the researchers. Study and analysis determined that the subglacial lake was teeming with bacterial life and the samples contained an average of 10,000 bacterial cells per milliliter although this number may seem paltry in comparison to 1 million bacterial cells per milliliter in samples taken from the ocean for a totally sunless underground lake the numbers are astonishing. The fact that there is such a relative abundance of organic matter means that the lake could very likely be supporting other, more complex life forms, which the research expedition will likely begin to search for. And nearby subglacial lake also revealed high levels of bacteria during an expedition in 2013, which further validates these more recent findings and leads researchers to theorize that these lakes were at one point connected to the larger oceans. This would have been thousands of years ago and thus have remnants of carbon deposits from early photosynthesizing organisms that allow the modern-day bacteria to survive. The discovery of such a surprising abundance of life forms is important to researchers. The first is that it gives hope and guidance to the search for extraterrestrial life forms, especially on Mars, which has evidence of dried-up underground saltwater lakes, not unlike the ones uncovered in the Antarctic. The second benefit of this discovery for researchers is that it provides important information about the history of Antarctica and what the now hostile place might have looked like thousands of years ago. Mars Curiosity rover is part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission. It was launched on the 26th of November 2011 and it landed on Mars in early August 2012. NASA has said that Curiosity has been vital in helping them to understand the terrain of Mars and this will help with upcoming Mars missions. In recent years, the Curiosity has sent back many images and a few of these have been of this mysterious light could be seen allegedly hovering above large rock formations. Those who saw the image immediately started to ask NASA what it was, with some questioning whether the rover had just captured an unidentified flying object. Although at the time NASA didn't comment on this photograph, they had commented on others which showed similar looking lights, saying these have nothing to do with unidentified flying objects and are likely sun reflections saying that they've seen similar-looking anomalies in photographs and they were created due to the sun's rays reflecting off a nearby rock. Although this is the theory that's been put forward by the space agency, some people aren't buying it and have said that in the past they've seen mysterious objects hovering above the Martian sky. This has led to various different theories being put forward to try and explain them. One person said the following, I don't know why NASA is so against the idea of labeling something as an unidentified flying object. It's so weird the relationship they have with UFOs. It seems they do everything in their power to not label something as an unknown object. There's nothing wrong with labeling something as a UFO. You're not admitting that it's alien life. You're just saying it's an object that can't be identified at that moment in time. End quote. Others who have looked through Mars apps and old Mars images have said they think it's a UFO though, going on to say that it even looks to be in the shape of a craft. For years now people have said they've seen odd-looking things on the Martian surface and it's caused them to question what actually happened here. Scientists will tell us that Mars is a planet that doesn't host life and that as of right now we've never found any evidence to suggest that life once existed there. But amateur researchers have claimed to have found various anomalies that go against this. One of these is the alleged animals that can be found scattered across the Martian surface. Probably one of the most well-known ones is that of the Mars rat and the Mars crab. This photograph was first discovered back in 2015, and those who saw it said it reminded them of the facehuggers from the Alien franchise. Some who study the image have said you can make out eight legs, while many argued about its size, with guesses ranging from a few feet to the size of a car. As mentioned though, NASA are against the idea of labeling these objects as UFOs or animals and have said that as of right now they've never seen anything that suggests that UFOs are out there and that they are able to explain every object that they photographed. A statement that I should point out is often criticized by many. Those who believe that Mars was once inhabited in the past have said that NASA have failed to comment on certain images. 
but skeptics have said the reason NASA doesn't reply is because there's so many of these alleged anomalies and it will take them forever to reply to each individual. Skeptics have said that NASA have replied in the past and the people don't believe them when they present their answers. One of the answers they presented in the past to explain away these anomalies is that of pareidolia. Today people are still finding and debating photographs that are sent back from Mars. This isn't the only curiosity discovery. NASA said that the Curiosity rover found evidence of Martian bacteria. Only a few years ago NASA made an incredible discovery, in which the initial signs of life on Mars arose for NASA astrobiologists and research scientists back in 2004 and then from the surface of Mars and began to quickly theorize its implications as an organic molecule of which only finds natural formation via the creation of a variety of bacteria. After many sleepless nights, engineers of the space agency worked to send a Martian rover with the capability of testing the Martian surface for additional organic molecules. Later in 2014, Martian rover Curiosity began collecting evidence of methane traces in the Martian atmosphere and made a startling discovery. The Martian rover found that the methane on Mars grew more concentrated by seasons in the Martian atmosphere and directly correlated with the Martian seasons overall. This led researchers to believe that this correlation between the concentration by seasons was additional proof to the hypothesis that Mars contains some form of life. Could it be a weather station? Well, another person said the following, I know that some people are saying that it looks like a building, but to me both of the objects appear to be hovering, as you can see both of them casting a shadow on the ground. I'm not saying that these are unidentified flying objects, but it does look like they're flying. I've seen similar looking structures in Antarctica and no one seems to know where these things come from. Same as the other structure, people can't agree on what this thing is, leaving some to believe that perhaps there are secret bases or objects in Antarctica that we're not being told about. Scientists recently announced that they carried out tests on a subglacial lake and found them to be teeming with life. Antarctica is known for being a place where life does not flourish, although creatures such as penguins, seals, and krill do inhabit the icy continent. Most of these species do not live there all year round and migrate elsewhere to escape the brutal winter. When researchers visit, the conditions are so extreme that they must take intense precautions to prevent hypothermia. The last thing that any of these researchers expected to find was an area actually teeming with life, but that's exactly what they stumbled upon. Under an ice sheet around 3,500 feet deep lies a lake around 50 feet deep. Researchers interested in studying this lake used drills and hot water to break through the layer of ice and they took 15 gallons of water samples and a sediment core over 15 feet long from the dark waters below what these samples revealed surprised the researchers. Study and analysis determined that the subglacial lake was teeming with bacterial life and the samples contained an average of 10,000 bacterial cells per milliliter although this number may seem paltry in comparison to 1 million bacterial cells per Milliliter in samples taken from the ocean for a totally sunless underground lake the numbers are astonishing. The fact that there is such a relative abundance of organic matter means that the lake could very likely be supporting other, more complex life forms which the research expedition will likely begin to search for. A nearby subglacial lake also revealed high levels of bacteria during an expedition in 2013, which further validates these more recent findings and leads researchers to theorize that these lakes were at one point connected to the larger oceans. This would have been thousands of years ago and thus have remnants of carbon deposits from early photosynthesizing organisms that allow the modern-day bacteria to survive. The discovery of such a surprising abundance of life forms is important to researchers. The first is that it gives hope and guidance to the search for extraterrestrial life forms, especially on Mars, which has evidence of dried up underground saltwater lakes, not unlike the ones uncovered in the Antarctic. The second benefit of this discovery for researchers is that it provides important information about the history of Antarctica and what the now hostile place might have looked like thousands of years ago. Mars Curiosity rover is part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission. It was launched on the 26th of November 2011 and it landed on Mars in early August 2012. NASA has said that Curiosity has been vital in helping them to understand the terrain of Mars and this will help with upcoming Mars missions. In recent years the Curiosity has sent back many images and a few of these have been of this mysterious light could be seen allegedly hovering above large rock formations.
Those who saw the image immediately started to ask NASA what it was, with some questioning whether the rover had just captured an unidentified flying object. Although at the time NASA didn't comment on this photograph, they had commented on others which showed similar looking lights, saying these have nothing to do with unidentified flying objects and are likely sun reflections. Saying that they've seen similar looking anomalies in photographs and they were created due to the sun's rays reflecting off a nearby rock. Although this is the theory that's been put forward by the space agency, some people aren't buying it and have said that in the past they've seen mysterious objects hovering above the Martian sky. This has led to various different theories being put forward to try and explain them. One person said the following, I don't know why NASA is so against the idea of labeling something as an unidentified flying object. It's so weird the relationship they have with UFOs. It seems they do everything in their power to not label something as an unknown object. There's nothing wrong with labeling something as a UFO. You're not admitting that it's alien life. You're just saying it's an object that can't be identified at that moment in time. End quote. Others who have looked through Mars apps and old Mars images have said they think it's a UFO though, going on to say that it even looks to be in the shape of a craft. For years now people have said they've seen odd-looking things on the Martian surface and it's caused them to question what actually happened here. Scientists will tell us that Mars is a planet that doesn't host life and that as of right now we've never found any evidence to suggest that life once existed there. But amateur researchers have claimed to have found various anomalies that go against this. One of these is the alleged animals that can be found scattered across the Martian surface. Probably one of the most well-known ones is that of the Mars rat and the Mars crab. This photograph was first discovered back in 2015, and those who saw it said it reminded them of the face huggers from the Alien franchise. Some who study the image have said you can make out eight legs, while many argued about its size, with guesses ranging from a few feet to the size of a car. As mentioned though, NASA are against the idea of labeling these objects as UFOs or animals and have said that as of right now they've never seen anything that suggests that UFOs are out there and that they are able to explain every object that they photographed. A statement that I should point out is often criticized by many. Those who believe that Mars was once inhabited in the past have said that NASA have failed to comment on certain images. But skeptics have said the reason NASA doesn't reply is because there's so many of these alleged anomalies and it will take them forever to reply to each individual. Skeptics have said that NASA have replied in the past and the people don't believe them when they present their answers. One of the answers they presented in the past to explain away these anomalies is that of pareidolia. Today people are still finding and debating photographs that are sent back from Mars. This isn't the only curiosity discovery. NASA said that the Curiosity rover found evidence of Martian bacteria. Only a few years ago, NASA made an incredible discovery, in which the initial signs of life on Mars arose for NASA astrobiologists and research scientists back in 2004, and then again later confirmed back during the landing of the Martian probe. The private space agency originally saw signs of a methane plume ejecting from the surface of Mars and began to quickly theorize its implications as an organic molecule of which only finds natural formation via the creation of a variety of bacteria. After many sleepless nights, engineers of the space agency worked to send a Martian rover with the capability of testing the Martian surface for additional organic molecules. Later in 2014, Martian rover Curiosity began collecting evidence of methane traces in the Martian atmosphere and made a startling discovery. The Martian rover found that the methane on Mars grew more concentrated by seasons in the Martian atmosphere and directly correlated with the Martian seasons overall. This led researchers to believe that this correlation between the concentration by seasons was additional proof to the hypothesis that Mars contains some form of life. On January 3, 2019, at around 10.26 a.m. Beijing time, China's robot spacecraft successfully landed on the far side of the moon. The spacecraft Chang'e 4 puts China in the running for a space leader as it's the first in history to land in the South Pole at Kimbazan, which is an area of the moon that is never visible to Earth. This dark side of the moon is unexplored territory. No one has attempted to reach it before. The moon is the Earth's only natural satellite rotating every 27 days or so. We actually are only able to see approximately 60% of the moon's surface. The 40% of the dark side of the moon is always hidden away from us. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration has spent the past 50 years collecting images of the far side of the moon, and this is through satellites and other space probes. 
So, although we have known for some time what the other side roughly looks like, this landing makes history and will reveal even more detailed information about the moon and space that we did not know prior. There is no direct communication link to the robotic spacecraft. So in order for the lunar images it captured to reach Earth, it has to be rerouted through another satellite that China recently launched prior to this mission. The Trini 4 was launched on December 7, 2018 and arrived in the moon's orbit five days later. It then took the rest of the month to lure itself onto the surface. Named after a Chinese goddess who supposedly lived for millennia on the moon, its mission is to explore the massive South Pole Aachen Basin. This basin is one of the largest known impact craters in our whole solar system. The distance from its tallest peak to its very depths is nearly 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles. To put that into perspective, Mount Everest measures around 9.8 kilometers or 5.5 miles. Chang'e 4 will collect soil samples to analyze the structure and composition of the moon above and below its surface. What's even more amazing is that the Chang'e 4 brought live plant species from Earth that it will use to plant a garden. It carries cotton, rapeseed, potato, yeast, and the small flowering plant Arabidopsis. Apart from gathering samples and data, its other mission is to attempt to grow the first plants on the moon. The China National Space Administration also explained that since there is no radio interference on the dark side, there is opportunity for the spacecraft to observe the stars and nebula using radio astronomy. Even though the moon has been explored since the 1960s, there is still so much information still unknown to us. China first announced its moon landing plan back in 2016. Their space program has grown incredibly quick since their first astronaut launching in 2003, and over time they managed to send multiple robotic spacecrafts onto the moon. They've also launched various satellites and space stations and even a Mars rover. It's amazing to think how far we've come technologically. China has also revealed their plans to create a nuclear fusion reactor that will reach extreme temperatures similar to those found at the sun's core. They claim that their artificial sun will be able to burn up to 360 million degrees Fahrenheit, around 12 times hotter than our sun. Nuclear fusion on the sun occurs when two hydrogen nuclei fuse together to form a heavier helium nucleus, thus releasing an intense amount of energy during the process. Their device is called the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak. A tokamak is a ring-shaped device in which the hydrogen is heated to extreme temperatures and turns into plasma.